How's it going, guys? It's your boy, Matt. Uh, I just wanted to make a little quick little segment before the video actually starts, just to explain that this footage has actually been in my laptop for about two weeks, I think. And this was shot uh, before a tournament that I went to. And right now, this is much, much, much after the tournament. So I just wanted to like clarify that because like sometimes I'll be mentioning, you know, I'm going to the tournament, blah, 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 blah. This, this is much, much, this is before that, right now, we're after that, the fact is, whatever, it doesn't matter, I'm just trying to explain, like, this thing has been in my computer for a very long time, and I wanted to upload it, I know it's very long, it's, it's, it's a really long video, it's just, I don't know, like, when people make 10 minute videos to talk about stuff, like, I, like, I feel like they drag out their points too much, like, if you don't really have something to talk about it, then don't, don't talk, if you don't really have something to talk about, then just don't talk about it, that's how I feel, like, when I make videos where I have a conversation with you guys, when I sit down and talk about something that I, I want to talk about, it, it's, it, it, it means that I, I, it's something I have a lot of stuff to say. It's basically what I'm trying to say. I don't have words right now, but when I have words, I like to let them out, and they, 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 they take up a lot of time. So if you sit through all of this, I appreciate it a lot, and if you don't, I understand. I get it. But um, this is basically a video of me just talking about like how I feel personally about each character, and I feel like a lot of like the ways, the ways I feel about each character are pretty spot on. Uh, even they, they, they even stand up to today, so... Anyway, yeah, enjoy, I don't know. I, I just wanted a little clarification why this is coming out now. When it, should, it should have been out like weeks ago, but I haven't had it in it and it's, it's been really stupid. Anyway, I'm adding even more minutes to like the, the already long enough video, so I'm gonna stop right now. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Later. Man, this game is terrible. Oh my god, this game is so bad. Why do I even want to play this game? Come on, man. This... It's so bad. I can't... Oh, hi. How you doing, guys? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just um playing Smash 4. Yeah. I can't go back to this. I just can't. It's not it's not what it was. Which is a stark comparison to what it was when Ultimate first came out. Hi, my name is Matt. I am the co-owner and owner and co-host and also the host of this uh, channel where we run a Let's Play. Uh, today I'm guest starting in this uh, little video that we're going to be doing. We're going to be sitting here for quite a while, so grab yourselves a nice little mug. Ah, oh, that's hot. That's hot. Um, yeah, I just I just made that. But yeah, we're going to have a, a nice little little chill moment where we're just going to relax and talk for a bit about um, Ultimate. When Ultimate first came out, uh, let, let me just uh, take a screenshot. That's not what I wanted to do at all. This game feels so slow. So slow. So bad. And I'm still going to hold on to the 3DS in hopes that we get a Mother 3 3D at some point in our lives. It's not going to happen, but what are you going to do, you know? Hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, when Ultimate first came out, I got to admit, like, the first day playing it, I was playing it for like hours and hours and hours. I played Smash 4 like very, like, I wouldn't say professionally, but to that kind of extent, you know, like on a very competitive level. And the first day of playing Ultimate, it just, it, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel good. It felt worse, in my opinion. Like, I didn't like it. I didn't like how I felt. I felt really bad at the game, which made me feel even worse. It just... That, that, that period of getting used to the game was really awkward because I just I was missing Smash 4, honestly. I just wanted to go back to Smash 4. I, I wasn't into it, honestly. I wasn't into Ultimate at all. Like Once the hype went down and I was actually down, sitting down and playing the game, I, I wasn't into it. I wasn't a fan of it. But now, it's, it's, it's the greatest. It's the greatest. It's the best. It's honest to God that the best Smash ever, ever. And... Honestly, it feels really, really balanced, 
minus a couple of hiccups here and there that will probably get fixed later on. But honestly, I don't want to nerf everything. I want us to get rid of that, that, that mentality of we have to nerf everything. Just nerf the things that are honest to God broken. But don't don't go nerfing everyone, you know? Like don't don't bring a top character all the way down. Like don't do that. Just just buff the low characters so that we can have a roster full of amazing characters. Which right now it feels like it. It feels like we have a roster of viable characters. Like everybody feels viable. So with that being said, um I wanted to take Ultimate into a very competitive level to the point of just going to tournaments. So I've been preparing for um Let's Make Moves, which is on the 29th, just a couple of days, honestly, and um I was getting ready for that, so I decided, you know what, I, I still have no idea who my main is, and uh, I need to figure that out. And what's the best way to figure it out than just playing everybody? Which sounds nice on paper, but when you put it into actual like hours of gameplay, it took a while to get through everybody. And I wanted to give everybody a fair, fair shot at, you know, becoming my new main, possibly. So what I did is I went through the roster and or it only took me a, a day or so to unlock the full roster. So <laughs> I did it back in the day when it was actually tough. And weird flex, I know, but whatever. It's stupid. Anyway, um, I had the full roster pretty early in the game. I think I was the first out of everybody that I know to actually have the full roster. Um, so yeah, and then after that I just went to the World of Light and beat it in a, another day or so. Like, I was going ham in this game. I, just, I took off from work for a couple of days. I was just... I was in. I was going in. But what I did to figure out what characters I like and what characters I don't like... Because everybody's changed. Everybody's a little different. Not 100% different, but everybody feels different. And the game feels different. So maybe to get used to the game and get used to new char the characters the way they work now, uh, the best thing I could come up with is just to go through the whole, the whole roster. Just play every character. So what I did is I played everybody in order. And I made sure um, that they could at least get to 10 wins. If you made it to 10 wins, but you were only allowed 3 losses. So if you reached 3 losses before your 10 wins, I would put you in a bracket. Now, uh, before Ultimate came out, I made a video of a tier list of characters that I want to play with, what to expect, what I'm expecting to main, what I'm expecting to try out, and all blah 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 blah. And my old roster looks very different from my current one. Um, after actually going and trying out everybody. A lot of characters I didn't think I was going to like, I ended up really liking. And then a lot of characters that I thought maybe I might like, I ended up just not at all. But, you know, uh, live and learn, I guess. So, let's get let's let's get into this. This thing right here. Right here. Right here we have a little uh, something I created. Excuse me. Coughing. Alright, not, not too bad now. Um, so you see I have S plus S, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now these are the brackets in terms of ranking that I gave all the characters. I have the actual like list on my phone. And so S plus, let me actually just write these in real quick. S plus was characters that made it to 10 with zero losses. They made, they got the 10 wins. These were all wins against the level 9 CPU, by the way. So yeah, the, this one was 10 wins. Oh, great. I love it when you don't cooperate with me. You know what? I'm not going to write it in. just going to leave it at that. Yeah, forget you. You don't want to cooperate, then I'm not playing with you. Anyway, S Plus was characters that made it to 10 wins in a row consecutively without losing any battles. These were all done against level 9 CPUs, and don't even at me. The level 9 CPUs in this game can probably win EVIL. I don't even want to hear you right now. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, the S rank for characters that made it to 10 wins and only lost once. A rank were characters that I made it to 10 wins and only lost twice. Uh, B characters were characters that made it between 9 and 8 wins and then lost 3 times. C characters are characters that made it between 7 to 6 and lost 3 times. Everybody obviously lost 3 times. Um, uh, well, unless they made it to S or S plus or A, whatever, you get the idea. Uh, characters in D had 5 to 4 wins. Characters in E had 3 to 2 wins. And characters in F had only one win, or no wins at all. Just completely got bodied with those characters. And there are characters that I did completely get bodied with. So what I want to do is I want to actually share with you guys my experience with all these characters and talk about them. Talk about how they play. Uh, talk about what I felt um, was good about them, what I felt was terrible about them. You know, like like I said, all, every character felt viable. Just maybe it, it didn't resonate with me personally, but I can kind of like get wage the idea of like how good a character 
is gonna do competitively or you know stuff like that like I know I mean I'm not a, I'm not zero I'm not Ezam I'm not any of the top dogs out there so obviously like their word is like word of God but I don't think we should take it that way either you know because like a lot of people could be wrong about a lot of things you know so like take take it as an opinion and also take mine as an opinion it's Take it more like an educated guess. I've been playing this game for a very long time, and I'm very serious with it. I'm very not bad with it, honestly. So I just I just wanted to talk with you guys. I just wanted to share. Let's just let's just get in it. Let's just get in it. So the way I'm gonna go about approaching how to do this is we're gonna talk about B tier first, then C, then A, then D, then S, then E, and then S plus, and then F. The reason why because F, with there being like 75 characters, like obviously F is gonna be the biggest bracket of characters that I have. Because I can't be amazing with all these characters. I'm I'm not zero. I can't I can't just do Iron Man a day after the game comes out and do it and win it. So yeah, no. Um, but yeah, it is the biggest one. But I don't want to give out my S plus characters like off the bat. And the S plus character roster is also pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty meaty. It's pretty thick. So there's a, there's some characters in there that I was just like, what? So. Anyway, this this is this was pretty much done to wage how I feel with each character, and so let's just let's just jump right in it so we can actually get to talking about these characters. Like the way I'm gonna do it is actually I'm gonna mention from worst to best. So it's gonna be annoying to actually like put them in order, but you know what? That's that's the way I want to project. That's the way I want to do. It. Let's do it. Let's start with B list. So in B list, the first the worst character I have in my B tier, and B tier is not bad, mind you. It's it's nine to eight wins, so it's not so terrible. I didn't do terrible with them. Uh, DK, DK is the one that did the worst on the B tier. He got eight wins. Nobody um, got nine on this on this uh, list. Just just to clarify before we get any further, nobody got nine. Uh, I didn't get a nine run with anybody, but DK I was not expecting to do good with because I hate that character. I suck with DK. I hate DK. I can't play DK. He's too slow, too too awkward for me. But man, meteoring people with DK if it doesn't feel good, and I don't, know, I don't know. I can't. I don't know what to tell you, man. Plus the the, the charge stub, call it call it donkey punch. It's just it's so good. It's so good. It does so much damage. He's he's ridiculous. He's really strong. He's pretty fast actually in ultimate. I, I was expecting him to be. Garbage. Like in, in in Smash Four, I felt like he was just combo fodder. Like he would just show up just to get comboed and killed. But in this game, he felt like a threat. Like I felt like I was a threat to my opponent, and I did a lot better, honestly, because I like I said, I suck with it. Uh, the next character up on this list is going to be. Let me see if I can find them. Here he is, Wario. Now Wario was a character that I did not expect to like at all. I don't like Wario. Uh, fighting him, I don't like looking at the way he plays. I, I, I have no, I have zero appeal in Wario, but playing as him, my God, is he fun to play with? He is so fun, just messing people up with the bike. Just, just his his offstage game is just, it's good. It's so good, and he's so strong. Like, why is he so strong? He kills so early. This character is so good. It's really, really good. Like he. He felt really fun to play with, and I was not expecting that at all. I don't like, I don't like Wario at all. Even now, I, I might, I, I still don't feel like I like him, but I can see the appeal now. I really, really, really like how he plays. Like he's, he's a fun character. If not for anything else, he's very, very fun. Uh, but yeah, he felt good. He felt good. I had a weird match with Roy. I'm gonna put like a, a little, a little bit of the footage, maybe somewhere on this screen, where he just kind of like. Something something went weird with that match. I don't. It's just, I've seen footage of this happening to a lot of people apparently, and I, I think it's just Roy wave dashing, not wave dashing, just, just dash dancing too too fast, way too fast. Like impossibly fast for like a regular person to be able to pull off. But yeah, Warrior, fun character, really fun character, really strong, or really powerful off stage. Just just a good character, man. He's really solid, honestly. Uh, this guy. Did not make it as far as I thought he would. Like initially, I thought I was gonna just F with this character, just just a big old F. But he was actually surprisingly very, very good, and I, I could see what the top dogs are talking about now. Uh, where are you, man? I'm looking for you. Can't see you anywhere. Why is this like out of order? 
Everything's just out of whack. There he is, this guy. Olimar. Olimar is ridiculous. He's just ridiculous. I started his run losing twice. I, I just, the first pick, Olimar, went into battle, lost. Expected it. I, ex I suck with Olimar, I don't like Olimar, I hate Olimar. He is my most hated character in this entire roster. Was my most hated character in this entire roster. I lost that first game and I was like, whatever, I don't care. I went into the next game and I lost. But something clicked in that game and I was just like, yo, this character is actually honestly pretty decent. What? This character's good. And it feels good to be good with him. And then in the next game I won. And then I won again. And then I won again. And then I kept winning. So I won eight in a row after figuring out the character. Because like I went in blind, not knowing how to play the character at all whatsoever. I have never played this character. I played him like maybe in Brawl and I, I hated it, so I just never gave him a chance again. And then in Smash 4 he was worse, so why would I even bother? But in this game a lot of people were saying, you know, Olimar top tier. Olimar is like, he's, he's really, really good. And I can see that. Like, this guy is a monster. Like, you have no options against him. Like, you think you're safe, but you're never safe against Olimar. Like, he'll just... He, he can do things that are just ridiculous. Like, he can frame trap you so easily. He can just 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 chase you so well. And he's he's so powerful. Like, you wouldn't think so, but he is so strong. Like, too strong. Like, way too strong. Like, he's fast. He's strong. He's a, he's a projectile character, too. So it's like, why are you so fast and strong? And his recovery is amazing as long as you throw the Pikmin away while you're doing it. Like, you can come back to stage with Olimar. There's just, there's no way you can't. I mean, you, you can get bodied outside of the stage just like any other character, but he's so good, man. He is really, really good. I'm, I'm impressed with Olimar. I really like playing Olimar, honestly. Like, I can't hate on Olimar anymore. Like, I, I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so fun. Uh, next. Next, we have another character who I actually did better than with Olimar. Which is Ness. Ness, what the? No. Why did I grab Lucas? I meant to grab Ness. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, technical, technical, technical error. Where is he, man? I know you guys are probably gonna spot him right away and then be like, "Oh my God! Just hurry up and find him." Uh, I don't blame you. I, don't, I can't see him. I really can't see him. Where the hell is Ness? Oh my God. Yo, am I blind? I really can't find Ness. Where is his scary ass face? Yo, is Ness just not here? Oh, there he is. What the hell, man? I, c I cannot see him at all. Anyway, Ness. Ness is actually a character that I did pretty decent with. I put Lucas up there. I'm like, I suck with Lucas, what the hell? Now, anyway, uh, spoilers. <laughs> but Ness is so powerful. Like, this child is so powerful. His combo game is just as good as it was in Smash 4. Maybe not to that crazy extent, but if you play it well, if you plan it well, yeah, to that extent. Like, even better, actually. Like, PK Fire does, like, 20% for free if you don't get out of that frame trap. And then he could just walk in and grab you and just your combo fodder for free. Like, this character does so much damage. Back throw is still amazing. Um, Incineroar took, you know, the number one spot for strongest back throw in the game, in this game. But... It's still nothing to sneeze at. Like, he'll grab you at 1, 120. Goodbye. If you're on the edge of the stage and he grabs you, goodbye, you're done. Lose that stock, say goodbye to it, you'll never see it again. It's gone. Like, this character is really, really fun. Really strong. Really good. PK Blast. PK Flash. I don't know why I said PK Blast. PK Flash? I was able to connect so easily. Especially, like, edge guarding. I was able to edge guard with PK Flash so well. It's, it's scary, like, it's so good, it's bad, like, I was even able to, I don't know how, PK fire, and then while the opponent was trapped in that PK fire, set up PK flash, and then when the opponent got out of the PK fire, it went straight into the PK flash and just dead, like, dead, it, it didn't, it wasn't true combo, but it's still scary, like, the fact that you can do that, and it, it's good, because PK flash was just useless, it was worthless, it was a worthless ass move. Um, his low bull tackle, his PK Thunder charge thing, it's really strong, still as good as it used to be. Crazy, it's crazy. 
his little yo-yo, when you charge the, 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 I think it's up smash or down smash, the one that he puts it behind him and he keeps it there charging, you can charge smash attacks for, for years. You can just charge a smash, a smash attack, go to the bathroom, come back, and you're still charging the smash attack. You can break shields with it. If you have your opponent corner in a, in a corner, and they start shielding, and you do that and you hold it there, that shield is going to go, bah, you're goodbye, it's done, it's over. It, like, he, he's good character, that character is good. I don't care what anybody says. That character is amazing. Oh, this, this, uh, IGN, I think it was. Like they, they made a they made a thing where they said what characters need to be nerfed, and they put Ness in it. Like Ness nerfed. I agree. He's amazing. Stupid. Let's move on. Uh, next after Ness, I have Sonic. Now Sonic is actually not bad. I started out his run also losing twice. Because I was trying to play him like I played him in Smash 4, which in Ultimate absolutely does not work. He is not the Sonic he used to be. Spin Dash is not as good as he used to be, it's not as strong, but it's still a very powerful mix-up tool. But the best thing that Sonic has in this game is his speed. And that's dumb, obvious, right? Wrong. The way he works in this game, is he's, he's very good at aerial chases, and he's very good at chasing in general. Like, if you see an opening, Sonic is gonna hit you for it. Like, there is no opening you're safe when you're fighting Sonic. Like, if you fight a good Sonic, like a good Sonic player, he's not gonna let you breathe. You're not gonna be able to have an opening because that opening is gonna be his, all his. And then he's gonna rack up the damage and before you know it, you're dead. And like, I started figuring out how to do that with him and he just started just bodying things. Like, he's really good. He's, he's surprisingly very, very good. Like, I was expecting him to be pretty decent. I wasn't expecting him to be, like, amazing. If Shadow was in the game, I was expecting him to be the best character in the game because it's Sonic with projectiles. But... It's never, it's never gonna happen. Whatever. I'm over it. We're all over it. Forget it. Anyway. Sonic. Really strong. Really, really strong. I can see, like, people who main Sonic are gonna have... They're gonna go rampant on this game. Like, I did I did really solid... solid I did solid with him. And I feel like people who are pro Sonic players, they're gonna wreck shop when it comes to Sonic. Sonic is just so good now, and he's so strong too. Like his 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 um his his um, back air, it's so powerful. It's really powerful. Um, he can just frame trap you so easily too. Like he's he's so good. He's really really good. And that's it for B tier. B tier is, is not even that long, but yeah, that's it. That's it. So we're gonna move on to C tier where I had people who got even either 7 or 6 wins. So this is like, I would consider C tier to be like the average. Like, this is like above, because average would be like 5 wins. So this is like slightly above average characters. They're not amazing. Like, B tier is, is they're good, they're solid. C tier is like, they're okay, they're okay, they're good. They're, they're good, but they're not amazing. So let's start with the lowest character that I have on the list. And he was actually very, very fun to play with and did really well, and that is Yoshi. Yoshi, in this game, is insanity. Like, he is so fast, he is so strong, his projectiles are so good, he can trap you, he can, if you're trying to edge guard Yoshi, he's gonna throw eggs at you, and you you just, you have to defend yourself against him, and then effectively, he's gonna ruin your edge trap, like your edge traps, he's gonna ruin your edge guarding, like, he's gonna ruin your edge guarding game, and if he throws you off stage, you're like, your fodder, like you're you're dead. He can come back to stage for free. You cannot. Like his little egg throw thing, his it's as recovery is so much better than it used to be. Like he can literally just do the double jump, and if he still doesn't make it, he can throw an egg. Still doesn't make it, throw another egg. Make it there for free. Like it's so good. It's so good. His recovery is amazing. The character just feels good, and I hated how he played in the Smash War. Like I hated the character. I could not get into it. Like I tried, and I just I couldn't. He felt fast. He felt good in Smash War, but he felt lacking like his moveset just didn't seem strong enough to actually work but it works so well here like he's so fast he's so strong he's so unpredictable and that's that's the best thing about him it's like you think he can like he's gonna roll out at you but he might just jump out of it and grab you with his tongue like he's just he's good he's a good character and now you're cold thanks a lot obama moving on Yoshi's amazing. Yoshi's amazing. Uh, next character that I have on the C list. Remember, this is from worst to best. So Sonic is my best B tier character. So and Yoshi is my worst C tier character. I have Little Mac. Uh, Little Mac 
this little boost to his recovery actually helps quite a bit if you do it right. If you get knocked off stage, you should forward B first before you do anything else. Because people are going to try to hit you out of that forward B. And if people try to hit you out of the forward B and you can still jump, you should just jump and then up B. Like, his recovery is a lot better if you know how to use it correctly. If you, you should know your options. You should try to figure out in your head what is disappointing I'm trying to edge guard me with and how do I get back to stage and avoid it. And then if you can execute it correctly, you can get back to stage for the night. It's not, it's not the end of the world for you if you're off stage anymore. Before I used to be, now you have a little bit of a fighting chance. It's still not amazing by any means, don't, don't get me wrong. He's still not really good off stage at all. He's still terrible off stage, but it's not as bad as it used to be. And that helps him a ton because on the ground, he's way faster now. And he already was really fast. And his smash attacks are so strong now. His armor is just free, like he'll eat anything you throw at him and he'll just destroy you. He's so much stronger than he was in Smash 4, he's so much better. His KO Punch just is still ridiculous, like it's it's nuts, you get a stock for free basically, if you hit it. And if you don't hit it, then whatever, you'll get it back, hopefully. But he, he's still really good, he's, he's, he's solid, he is solid, he is a very, very good character. Uh, then I have, next up on this list, this guy who I actually expected to do amazing with, I didn't really click too much with him. Now, Pikachu in Smash 4, I was really, really good with. I, I wasn't amazing with him, but if I had to put him in this tier list in Smash 4, he would be A tier, at least A tier, B tier at, at the lowest, but I would say A tier. And in this game, I just, I can't. I don't know what it is, but I just, I can't. I can't figure out this Pikachu. I just can't, and it's, it doesn't feel good to play Pikachu for me. Like, I got a couple of Meteors with him, and that felt amazing, but as a whole, the character just didn't feel too good for me. Like, a lot of people are saying how powerful he is now, and how fast he is, and I, I don't see him being all that fast, honestly. Like, I, I know it sounds crazy, like, it's ridiculous, but... I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just me? Maybe I'm... I just feel like it's, he's a little overhyped, like he's not as great as you think he is. Or I mean, I'm not as great as people think he is, obviously, because I did terrible with him, but yeah, no, I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't. And I love this this little, little rat bastard over here, I love him. He was one of my favorite characters to play in Smash 4. He was so good, in fact, that I just kind of like stopped playing him, because once I figured out one of my friends pointed out that my biggest biggest weakness with Pikachu is that I just was attack, 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 attack. So it left me open for business and he, they would always just punish me. But once I figured that out, he became so strong that I was just like, nah, you know what? Out of fear of him becoming my new main, I didn't want to continue down that Pikachu path because I really love Lucina. So I didn't do it. But like I said, I really like playing this character and it's just, he's not the same anymore. Like, I don't know. It's not that he feels worse to me, it's just that the game has evolved to this point where he doesn't feel as good as he used to. He doesn't feel too much better in my opinion. He feels better, obviously, but he doesn't feel better to the point where all the other characters won't body him. Like, I don't know if that makes any sense. I didn't like Pikachu. I didn't like how he played. I'm sorry. I know everybody's gonna disagree with me and think I'm insane, but I just couldn't do it. I don't know what it is. I just. I couldn't, and I wish I could, because I love Pikachu. Like he's really cool. He, he's really cool. He's really good. I just couldn't do it. Uh, my best C tier character, however, are these little demons right here. Now, these little guys started off really weak for me. Like the run just didn't start off good. But once I figured out how to disjoint them and how to do just crazy coverage with them, like their coverage is just ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Ice Climbers are ridiculous. They're so much fun to play with. They're so horrible to fight against. It's just, they're good all around. Like, if you, if you want to bother somebody to no end, pick Ice Climbers. You're going you're gonna to body them, and on top of that, you're going to piss them off. It's just, it's a good time all around. I love them. They were, they were really fun. And I didn't expect it because I, I had zero interest in playing Ice Climbers. I didn't care for them. I didn't want nothing to do with them. I love them. They're, they're just so much fun. They're just a ridiculous amount of fun. And now we're gonna move on to A tier. Now A tier is the list of characters that made it to 10 wins with only two losses. So just kind of like barely made it to 10 wins. And the worst one on this list, surprisingly to me, 
was this dude right here. Roy. Now, this list has a, quite a few characters in it too. It has more characters than the B tier, so there's, there's going to be more characters than the B tier. But Roy is the worst out of all of them. And the reason why is because, yes, he feels strong, he feels fast, he feels great. But I could never, I was never good with Roy in Smash 4. I, I sucked with Roy. I, I was terrible with Roy, and it carried over over here. I was still terrible with Roy. I'm not good with him at all. He just doesn't feel as strong as I want him to feel. But he feels incredibly fast. But the thing is that you can have all that speed all you want, but if you can't capitalize on it, it's not going to do you any good. He's better than Sonic for sure, but at least in my opinion, or to me personally, he's better than Sonic. But is he a strong character? I don't know. A lot of people are saying Roy is top tier, and for sure he feels like a really top tier type of character, but I just personally can't do it. I can't play Roy at all. I suck with him. I don't know what it is. I just I can't. I can't. But he's really cool. He's really strong. He's really fast. He's he's just good. He's a good he's a good character. He's a good character. He feels good. He feels great. Uh, let's move on. Next, I have where is he? Toon Link. Now Toon Link, I was actually expecting to be a lot lower than this because just from fighting Toon Link, he doesn't feel as strong as the rest of the cast. I mean, the, the rest of the Links. It's kind of weird. That we we have six Zelda reps and half of them are Link. I, I still don't like that too much, but whatever. Toon Link doesn't, didn't seem to be, he felt like the weak, weakest Link. No pun intended. He felt like the weakest Link. Um, but he's actually really, really decent. Um, he has a lot of bomb setups that the other Links just don't have. And that's because his aerials are so awkward and lingering and weird. Like the arcs for his aerials are so, <coughs> sorry, they're so good. Um, in terms of like trapping people with explosions and his boomerang is still really good his arrows are decent but overall his bomb game is just it's what makes him like he can mess you up with bombs and he's good he's, he's really good I thought he was gonna be a lot weaker and a lot whatever but he's really fast he's really strong compared to like other characters like Toon Link um, Toon Link like Young Link Young Link seems to have less kill potential than Toon Link Toon Link seems to be a lot stronger and faster, which is scary because Young Link is already really fast and pretty damn strong too. But Toon Link just feels like the killer of the group, but at the same time he's not refined enough to the point where he would be better. I still think I still feel like he is the worst Link, but I don't feel like by that much, if that makes any sense. Um, after Toon Link, surprisingly, I have uh, where is this guy at? And I say surprisingly because I don't, I didn't like this character at all, which is Dark Pit. Dark Pit, I feel, got robbed. Like, I feel like I could have made it a lot higher with Dark Pit, but I feel like he got robbed and lost twice, like, really close to the end. And it sucked, because, like, I felt like he could have made it, he could have made it a lot higher than that. Because he's a good character, man. Him and Pit are just, oh my god, they're just so good. They're fast, they're strong, they have projectiles, they have... They've always had all these tools, but they were always terrible with them. Especially their forward beam. Their forward beam was garbage. Like you used to like if you missed with that, it was game over for you. Like there was no coming back from that. I think I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it, but I feel like if you go off stage with side B, you can come back, which is great because I don't think they could do that before. I'm not 100% sure on that. I, again, I, I didn't play them or anything. But they feel a lot better than they did before. That's for sure. They just feel really, really good, really strong. Um, yeah, I, I hate these characters. Like, I didn't like Pit or Dark Pit. I hated them. I thought they were really annoying, especially Pit with his, hi yeah, 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 Like, shut up. You're annoying. But he's good. He's a good character. Really good character. Um, yeah, I, I think he would have actually made it a lot higher. Like, probably S, maybe S+. plus. But I feel like I got robbed with him, honestly, and I kind of felt upset. But whatever. Because I felt upset because I liked playing him a lot more than Pit. Like, Pit's arrow game feels stronger in Dark Pits, but Dark Pit feels stronger in general. And I like that a lot. Like, he's fast and strong. Like, I, I really liked it. Like, Dark Pit was really fun to play with. Uh, the next character I did not expect to be this low. And that's Shulk. 
And the reason why is because he was my original main in Smash 4. I love this character. This character is just... He's so fun. He's so cool. He's so strong. He's so fast. He's, he's got everything. He's got everything you want. Like, in whatever situation you may be, you have a Monado for it. Before, he didn't have a Monado to help with his frame data because it was terrible and it just made him a terrible character in general. Because he started out being a really decent character. He was never amazing, and then they nerfed him. Like, why? Because everybody was like, oh, Shulk is broken. Nerf him. And then they did. And he turns out he wasn't broken. Same thing with Little Mac. Everybody was like, Little Mac's too strong. Nerf him. And they never nerfed him, and then he became completely useless. So it's like... Stop it! Stop it! Stop it with that! You stop that! No more nerfs! Stop nerfing things! Make things better! Make Smash great again! But yeah, Shulk! He feels like a really, really, really all-or-nothing type of character, though. Like, you can set up Speed Monado, go in there, and get like 20, 30 damage for free, because he's so fast, he's probably even- he's faster than Sonic, in my opinion. He feels faster than Sonic, anyway, when he's in Speed Monado. And like, there's nothing you can do against it. He's gonna run up to you and he's gonna hit you. From one way or another, he, you're gonna get hit because he's so fast. And then he can switch over to Buster, and he just goes fucked up. And then he 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 does exactly that. He fucks you up. Like he'll. I I was able to get like anywhere between like 80 to like 100 damage in just one run of Buster, because his smash attack does like a good like 40 percent or something like that. Like his little forward smash when the first hit does like. 10 and then the next 30 something like that it, it adds up to like almost like 40 percent like it's so strong and he can mix you up really well he could do his little forward air his little fair and then as if you quick land that into a forward smash it connects really well like to the point where i don't think the, the I, I think it might be sorry coffee i think it might be a true combo i'm not sure but it does a ridiculous amount of damage when you're a buster and then you switch over to smash and it's over Smash is so powerful in this game. It's OP. Like, you can literally just, like, dash attack at, like, 100, and they're dead. They just fly off dead. Like, gone. Goodbye. Any, any, you hit them, you touch them with any smash attack, and they're dead. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. If you're, like, anywhere near 100, you're dead if Shulk switches over to Smash. But the problem with that is that in Buster, he takes even more damage. So you can mess him up. Because there's characters like Ganondorf who do 40% on their own. They don't need an art for that, they just do it. So if you go into Buster, you're taking like 60. You're, you're, you're getting hurt. You're getting hurt badly. And then if you switch into Smash, you're also going to get sent flying even harder than the opponent is. So if they touch you, if you're at any like, I would say like 70% and you go into Smash, there's a really big chance that you can get killed. He's very all or nothing. But the thing is that when you make it work, when you go all and all goes through, you may take a stock and not even get touched. Like, that's how strong he is. Like, he could take a stock in, like, less than 20 seconds. Like, he just jumps in, you're dead. Like, he just, speed, blah, 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 buster, blah, 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 smash, blah, you're dead. That's it. And then on that same note, you can do that back to him. So, he's very all or nothing. He's very inconsistent. He feels really strong, but really inconsistent. And that's the only problem I see with him. He's so inconsistent that I could not make it any higher than that. I feel like if I got lucky, I would have made it to S+, plus easily. But the thing is, I don't like luck. Um, it's more, in my opinion, you should be just all skill, no luck. But obviously, you know, there's always a degree of luck in every type of fight. So, sadly, Shulk relies a little bit, a little bit on praying, but it doesn't always go that way. So he's, he's very all or nothing. He's very inconsistent, but he is very strong. It's very good. He's very good. I love it. I love, like, the fact that he's even up there for me, that's that's already a satisfaction that I'm not gonna get from Smash 4, because he was one of my favorite characters, and I could just, I just couldn't play him. I wanted to, you can ask all my friends, I played him so much, and just got bodied with him, but I'm still feeling it, and now I'm really feeling it. He's, he's just, he's fun. He's fun. I love that character, man. And now, above Shulk is my new favorite character in the entire roster. He didn't make it that high, but I love this guy, dude. This guy ruined... He came through on his reveal trailer and essentially just ruined my hopes and dreams. He just shat all over them. He just shattered them to pieces and he just, just, just spat on that. He destroyed my hopes and dreams, put them into little pieces, put them together in a pile, and just took a big old dump on it. And then he was like, guess what? I'm your new favorite character. And I was like, you're damn right you are. You sexy motherfucker. 
Like, I swear to God, this character is amazing. He's so much fun. Like, he's not really all that strong. He's not OP by any means necessary. But the fact that you could do like 100% in one hit... Who designed you, man? Who, who decided you were okay? Who decided it was okay for you to exist? He's crazy, man. Like, when things go right, he is just so much fun, man. I love this character. This character is just... Oh, God, if he's not good. He's... he's just, mm, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. And he taunts every time he hits you. It's, you can't ask for anything better, man. He's got two meteors. He can he can try to up B and then just, just gape you and just kill himself and kill you with him. Or he can just, just down smash you and uh, down smash you. And down air you and meteor smash you and you're dead. Like, he's so good. He's so good. You, you can approach, and they're gonna shield, and you can either grab, or you can just forward me. He's just, ah, and then if you counter, they're, they're dead. They're essentially dead. You do too much damage. I love this character, man. This character is so much fun. It's so much fun to play with. And I hated him. When he showed up, I was like, god damn you. And now I'm just like, god damn you, beautiful bastard. It's so fun to play with, man. He is, like, the Captain Falcon of this game, in my opinion. Like, he felt, he feels just as fun as Captain Falcon did back in Smash 4 and Melee and and brawl like he's just he's he's the type that he, he's gonna so yo man he's gonna swag on your enemies man that's that's all that's all he does i mean swag on your opponent that's what he does and it's, it's just so much fun uh next i have one of my mains from smash 4 and that's cloud cloud got taken to the shack in the back was shot in the knees he got shot in both kneecaps and now he can't run anymore but he can still walk but he can't run anymore um his nair it's just pitiful. His up air is still good, but it's not as broken as it used to be, which is fine. But his limit break, his limit break just, just, just got shanked in the back until he couldn't breathe anymore. And now it's barely alive after several surgeries. And it, he's, it's just barely hanging in there. If you don't use his limit break in 15 seconds, it's gone. Which is terrible if you're trying to save it to recover. Um... His limits are as strong as they used to be in Smash 4, which is terrible because everybody else got buffed. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, everybody does more damage. His limits do as much damage as they did in Smash 4 when it's one-on-one. -on -one. So they got... Damage-wise, they feel weaker. A lot weaker. Um, he, in general, doesn't feel as good. But I feel like that's because you have to play him differently now. Like, his up B is very, very, very useful now. I would say, like, if you if you uh, if you frame trap the opponent, and you kind of have them open, oh, a B comes out really quick, and it also goes down really quick. It just choo choo. Before it used to be fu fu, now it's like fu fu. So like, you can actually catch them at the beginning of it and use it to actually get some damage off of that, and it's it's actually useful now, which is weird. So it it just takes a little used getting used to. Cloud just feels like he plays almost the same as he did in Smash Four. But he could play better if you played him a little different. His little slide thing is a lot more useful in my opinion, because you can you, you can just slide over things. Like before, it was okay, but now it feels like it's a really good way to lead up into up airs. Um, finishing touch is still really strong. Just the limits are still really good for killing, just not as good for damage. But he still feels like a really strong character. He just doesn't feel as strong as he used to be. He's he's clearly not broken anymore. He's just He's okay. He's not great. He's he's okay. So yeah, Cloud got got the stick, but he's still pretty good. He's still pretty good. I, I love him, and I'm not gonna stop playing him because of that. Honestly, like he's still my favorite character of video games of all time. So why would I stop playing him? Uh, next on this list, I have another character that I feel like got robbed, so I put him at the very top of the list. And the reason he got robbed is because this character is really, really, really weird. I would say. And that's him, Richter. Richter and Simon are really weird in the sense that you have one way of playing him, playing them, the Belmonts, you have one way of playing them, and if you don't stick to it, you're gonna get in a lot of like, pain. You're, you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get hurt badly. If you do not stick to zoning and just doing the zoning correctly, you're, you're done. Once the enemy gets in and they're in your face, it's very hard to get him off, and it's very hard to just I mean, it's, it's not very hard to get them off. You can get them off easily, fine. Not, not too hard. But once they're in, they're in, and they're, they're going to cause a lot of pain, and they're very easily gimped off stage, too. They're not as strong as everybody thought they were going to be. I thought the, the Belmonts were going to be top tier for free, but they're not. They're not 
but they're very strong. I'm not gonna say they're bad. It's just that the second you stop playing the game the way they're supposed to play, you get destroyed. And during my run with Richter, it was right after my Simon run, so I was kind of tired of playing. Because the thing is, like, they're not, in my opinion, they're not the f most fun to play as. Because they're just very Sony, very spammy, and very, like, eh. Like, I like playing them, don't get me wrong, it's just I can't just constantly be playing them. I can't main Richter or Simon, I can't. Because I, I can't play them for too long before I'm like, alright, enough, I got it. Just, just B, down B, and B, and forward B. I get it. I want to press all the moves too. Like, and you, you can go up to them and be all up in their face with their, their, their forward air and back air. Just they're really quick. You just blah 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 and just swing at them like for free. But it's not as great. Like, it's not your greatest option to go up to people when you're a Sony character. You know what I mean? So yeah, you either do the job good or you get really punished for it. And I stopped doing the job good and I got really punished for it. And I was like, all right. This is bad. I gotta stop losing, and then I just kind of like put it together and just kept winning. So yeah, uh, Richter got robbed. He should have been higher than that, but eh, what are you gonna do? Uh, D. We move on to D. Oh, we're done with A. We're done with A. So D are characters that got either five or four wins. Now there's only one character that got four wins on the D train, and that is this guy right here. Now keep in mind, I suck with Luigi in Smash 4 anyway, so I wasn't going to do good with him to begin with, but he feels kind of, huh, I guess? Like, the, the way he works now feels better for me, but I feel like most people who play Luigi might not like it anymore. Like, to me, he feels really strong and really good and really consistent. Before, he felt very inconsistent for me and very, like, wonky, but people made it work, and he worked fine in Smash 4. Like, he worked very fine in Smash 4. But they, they took a lot of the, they, they mainly nerfed his tornado, which is I, I would I would I would argue it's his biggest nerf is the fact that the tornado doesn't spike anymore. I feel like it doesn't spike anymore, and it, you can't use it for recovery. It's just it's just not a viable recovery option. Um, and you can't uh, tether grab with his little plunger thing. So his grab being added the way it did is just it's nerf in itself too because it's slower. Uh, using it as a hitbox for Sayer is not that strong of an option either. But overall, the character feels amazing, and right now he's the only character I've seen do a zero death combo, which I don't think it's optimal or easy to pull off in any means necessary. But it's still in the game, and I don't feel like characters should have zero deaths. And that's that's a little too strong in my opinion. But yeah, Luigi was the only character I got four kills with, and. I'm not good with him, so makes sense, right? Makes sense. Dr. Mario is next, and Dr. Mario actually got five. So, like, nobody else got four. It was only Luigi. Uh, where is he? Where Dr. Mario at, bro? Bro, where you at? There he is, Dr. Mario. So, no, you go here. Dr. Mario felt better than Mario to me. He just, he felt stronger, he felt he felt better. He felt like a, a better version of Mario. Um, and the reason why is because like they gave him a meteor now, and the meteor is really fun to use. You give him Daz boots, and then people die. People die with Daz boots. And he just he feels stronger than Mario. His recovery is not as garbage compared to his as it used to be because he can use the tornado to recover, unlike Luigi. Poor poor ba poor bastard, man. He just he he got the stick, man. But Dr. Mario feels amazing. Dr. Mario feels really good. Feels really strong. Feels pretty fast. He doesn't feel as slow as he used to, and he's just he's just a better Mario in my opinion because Mario just doesn't have the combo game he used to have. And the combo game used to be, I mean, you know, just down throw, up air, up air, up, down throw, up tilt, up tilt, up tilt, down tilt, grab, up down throw, up tilt, up tilt. You know, it, it was with combo game for Mario was it. So I get I get them like changing it, changing the structure of it because it was very very up tilt, but. He doesn't have that anymore, so you have to be a little more creative with Mario. But it doesn't feel as good as it does with Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario just feels so much better, in my opinion. And I, so he just feels like a stronger Mario to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but to me personally, yeah, he did. Um, the next character on this list is a character that I was hoping would be a lot higher than this, but I'm not good with her, and I really wish I was. 
Uh, Zero Suit. Just, just, I'm not good with Zero Suit. I really am not. I want to be, because I feel like Zero Suit is so much fun to play with. But I suck with Zero Suit. Like, I was pretty okay with her in Smash 4. Like, I wasn't anything to write home about, but now she feels worse. Like, she doesn't feel as good. Her combo game in the air is not as strong. You don't get to up air, up air, up B and kill. Like, but you can uh, paralyze and then at like 100 and then up B and kill anyway. Like, her up B seems really strong. It just doesn't connect anymore. That's. It's really sad, man. I really liked I really liked her her combo game, and that's the reason why I like playing her in Smash Four. She's really fast, really strong, really cool combo game. She's like she's like a cool chic, like she really is just like a cool chic. But I'm not good with her. So what are you gonna do? You know, what are you gonna do? can't do nothing about that. Moving on, the next character here took me a very long time to figure out, and that's the reason why they're so low. This character feels amazing, man. Pac-Man just feels so good in this game. Pac-Man is so strong, like, the, the hydrant is so good, his his, his his throws are good, his his actual neutral game is really strong, and which is crazy, because it used to be really, really eh in Smash 4. Like, I, I don't feel like he was that strong in Smash 4, but in this game, my god, is it good. He's just, he's strong, he's really strong. I like this character a lot, he's a lot of fun to play with, he's just a lot of fun to play with, not to eat. But yeah. Not much I can say about it, other than that he feels a lot better than he did in Smash 4. Uh, the next character I have on this list should have also been a lot higher, but it took me a lot of time to actually get used to his speed. But once the, 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 these tryouts were done, and I figured out the character, I actually do a lot better with Pichu than I do with Pikachu. And I'm, I'm not just, you know, just saying that, like, he feels better to me. Like, he feels... So much better than Pikachu, and whatever. I don't care what anybody says, like, he's low-tier trash, whatever. Sure. To me, he doesn't feel that way. To me, he feels amazing. He feels so much better than Pikachu. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel that way. I like it. I like him a lot. He, he's so much faster, so much more fun, like, he's just adorable, man. Like, just look at him. I think I get mad for getting beaten by that. I mean, a lot of people online are getting mad because they just keep getting bodied by this thing, but he's just so... Cute man, like he's so fun. Like he's so fast, he's so cute, and he can kill you. His his thunder is just it's godlike. He still has that meteor that Pikachu was so revered for. I feel like his combo game is even stronger than Pikachu's because he's faster. Like I don't know, using Pichu correctly feels so much better than using Pikachu in general, in my opinion. It could be just me, but that's how I feel. Sorry, I did a little pause there. Um, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, we're going to move on to the S tier right now. Uh, the S tier are the characters that made it to 10, and they only lost one. Some of the characters that made it here, I feel like, should have been an S plus easily if I hadn't gotten robbed with them. Uh, it's probably seeing a pattern now. This guy right here. Worst of the S tier, but he's still on the S tier, which is ridiculous to me. Because I had absolutely no interest in playing Bowser, and Bowser is just so strong. He's just so good. He's fast. He's got armor. He's got damage. He's got he's got it all. He's really really strong in this game, and I I was surprised. I was very surprised to say the least at how good he actually is. And to see, he's, just, he's crazy. He's crazy, man. This guy can kill you so quickly. He's so good. Like on especially on like platforms, you wouldn't think so because he's a heavy, but on platforms he can just mess you up, man. He's so good. He is really, really good. A lot stronger than he was in Smash 4, for for sure, for free. Like, he used to be, like, bad. And now he's, like... His entire game doesn't revolve around grabbing you. His entire game revolves around playing the actual neutral game, and it's really, really fun. Like, it, he's so good, man. I really like him in this game. He's so much fun to play with, too. Um, next up, I have Mega Man. Mega Man is not a character that I feel like got robbed. But... I feel like he's so much better than he used to be. He's so strong. His um his down smash wrecks. Like it just kills. His forward air actually can kill up stage. Like if you use it to like uh, edge guard, it's really strong too. Like it's it's really really strong now. Um, what else does he have? His back air is not as good as it used to be. I feel like, but his forward air is amazing. So we're good. So like I'll take it. Um. I don't know, like, his tools are still pretty much the same. Still pretty much feels like same old Mega Man. Obviously, his forward smash kills, like, duh. 
that, that thing destroys, like it just wrecks shop. But it's good. His up tilt still kills. Um, his up air is surprisingly good now to actually like kill people off the top. Like it's he's good. He's such a good character now. Before he was like he was good, but he was really hard to be good with. Now he's just good in general. He's just generally good, and it's great because I feel like the Mega Man franchise deserves this kind of love to at least have the representation of Mega Man in the game actually be viable. I feel like it's good because in the last game, it's just uh, it's bad. It's so bad. Everybody was so happy that Mega Man was in Smash, and then he turned out to be really, really underwhelming to say the least. But this game, he's really, really good. And I'm happy for that. The only complaint I still have with Mega Man is that I wish that his charge shot would just be holding, like, A or B. I mean, it wouldn't be B because B is for special moves and charge shot is not a special move. It's not one of his specials. But I feel like at least just hold forward A and then be allowed to move move around while holding forward because he was always able to do that. Just don't, he, he shouldn't be allowed to use any of his other moves, but I don't see the problem of being able to move around with forward. I mean, it would be really strong, but just make it a little weaker and make it travel a lot more, and it would work. But I, I just feel like having his charge up just be his forward smash and he can't move around while doing it, it's so unfaithful to the actual like source material, and it's so weird. Like, it's so unlike Sakurai to do something like that. That's my only complaint about Mega Man, the fact that his charge shot doesn't make any sense. Other than that, he's cool, he's fun, I like him, I like him a lot now. I used to hate him, I used to think he was garbage in the last game, but really good. Uh, next up on that list, I have my bae, Wii Fit Trainer. Wii Fit Trainer surprised the hell out of me too. I started the run with her losing. so. She only got one loss in the entire run. So that first loss that I had was the only one she got in. And the reason why is because I didn't realize how to use her down B. When you go down B, you kill. You, you kill for free. She's so powerful. Like her, her neutral air, if you connect with both hits, is like 17%. She, her kill potential is insanity. Her, her praise the sun thing, like just shooting the fireball thing. It's just godlike. Her, her, all her aerials are really, really decent. Her, her moves are really decent in general. Like she, she's just a good character all around, and feels amazing. Like she feels really fast, really strong. Like I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I like playing with her. I didn't, I didn't fall in love with it, and I wouldn't. I don't think I would ever main a Wii Fit Trainer in any sense of the word. But it felt great. Like she is so strong. She's so good. Good for you, Wii Fit mains out there. Whoever you are, you bunch of weirdos. Love you. You're great. And you should be happy because your your girl, your girl or your boy, is just sick, sick. It's just sick. It's really good. Next up on this list, I have uh, the OG of the Echo that used to be my main, which is Marth. Eh, you can't put Marth in the front. Who gives? There we go. Marth feels really strong, really good. Feels better than he did in Smash 4, whether you want to admit it or not, or whether you just haven't gotten used to it yet, but Marth feels better than he used to. Um, the only thing that I consider worse for both Marth and Lucina is the neutral jab. The jab just doesn't work like it used to, and it sucks because it was my bread and butter, because I used to be able to jab into forward B, air, air forward B, into neutral air, into jab, into air forward B, into neutral air, into jab, and just continue the chain going. It wasn't a true combo, but it was a good mix-up to it. Like, I would be able to do uh, jab into neutral B, and then people would just try to shield the next move, and I'll just stab, or like, just jab into neutral B, into neutral air, and if the shield's still going, go for a grab. Like, there, there, there was no escape once I started the chain going, which was one of the reasons why I fell in love with Lucina. Like, Lucina was so so good at mixing people up, and I never got to see that in tournaments. I never got to see people utilize that, and I don't know if it was just because it wasn't viable, but I feel like it was one of her strongest things to do with her. Like, she was insane. Her mix-up game was so good. And the same thing with Marth. Marth's mix-up game was so good, but he's very reliant on the tipper now. More than ever than he used to be before, he's very reliant on the tipper now. And if you can't consistently tip, then he's not gonna perform the way he should. And it sucks. It sucks because 
and this engine being so much faster is so much more movement like it sucks that he has to rely so much on the tipper because it's harder to hit the tipper now because people are just they're just dash dancing around just fox trotting everywhere it's just it's just crazy it's just crazy movement now and then now it's harder to even predict movement so it's hard to get those those tips but that, that's the only thing holding him back in my opinion is the fact that he has to rely so heavily on tips it makes him very inconsistent it makes him it makes him really strong if it works, but half the time it doesn't work, so it just makes him really weak, in a sense. So, like, he's fine. He feels better than he did before, though. So, if you like Mark before, you'll get to love him now. Like, he's... Because the game is so much better now. Like, everything is better. So, like, if he's better than, just in general, better than Smash 4 Mark. For free. For sure. Moving on. Enough said. Uh, next up, I have... Uh... Mage Marth. Now, Mage Marth, Robin. Sorry if I if I if I if I um, if I triggered anybody. Robin is actually really really good if you plan ahead, which is funny in itself because he's a strategist, so it's funny. Now, if you play with Robin as the male version, that's fine and all, but you're playing him wrong because you should be playing the female version because that's just where it's at. But Robin is just so good. Like, her, her Thunder, every version of it is viable. Like, the regular Thunder can kill. Like, the regular Thunder can kill it pretty... It has to be a high percentage, obviously, but offstage, you're dead. You're dead if you get hit by that thing. Uh, the other one holds you in place in such a, a good amount that you can actually combo off of it now. Before, it was very inconsistent, but now it feels very, very good. Um, Thoron is just nuts. That thing destroys. It used to be, like... There was no point to ever charging up to, up to Thoron. You would just charge to Arc Thunder or the, the second one. I don't know what it's called. I guess it's Arc Thunder. I don't know. You you would charge to, 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 to Arc Thunder. Yeah, the first one was Thunder and then it's Arc Thunder. You would charge to Arc Thunder and just have him frame trapped and then maybe throw a fire or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. But it used to be a lot more inconsistent. Now, Thoron is the way to go. Like, before Thor was just, no. Nah. Why would you? It's dumb. You can combo off of Arc Thunder. Why would you even go to Thor where it does, like, 10% and it's completely garbage? It does, like, 20% now, and it kills. It absolutely kills. At 80%, you're, you might be dead. If it, catch, if it catches you on stage and you're above 80%, you're completely dead. You're annihilated. and You're done. You're done. You can get Arc Fired into Thor on, and you're just done. You're done. You're absolutely done. Um, his down B is good still, it's still really good. Um, it's just really hard to land. But the th the Thunder Sword, I don't know what it's called. There, there's Le Levin th Sword and there's the, the Thunder Sword. I don't know what it's called. That one is just nuts. It does too much damage, it does too much knockback. If he has that sword in his hands, you run. You run for the hills because he's gonna destroy you with it. Like, you're just not gonna have a chance to fight that thing. That thing is too strong. Up B is still good, still meteors, which is great. Um, what else? This is really good, man. She's she's so good all around. I loved Robin, man. I played Robin, and I got into Robin very late into Smash 4, and I was like, yo, this character is actually really, really fun. And it carried over into Smash 4 to an even greater extent. The problem with um, Robin is that, kind of like the Belmonts, if you stop thinking, if you start going into autopilot for even a second, you're, you're in a bit of trouble. Like, you actually have to plan ahead, uh, tra put traps down, like, he's, he, I would say Robin is, like, a magic snake, but, yeah, you, you kind of, like, have to play, play and plan, and, you know, it's, it's, it's more about playing keep away at the same time as also being able to play close and personal, kind of like Link, but to a greater extent, I would say, like, you have to have a really high IQ to be good with, with, um, with Robin, but Robin's really good, man, so fun, so good, so strong, like, I, I was, Surprised in in a good way. On top of Robin, though, I will put K. Rool. K. Rool is nasty, very nasty, very strong, very good. Uh, heavy with projectiles and counter is just who thought that was a good idea. But here he is, and he's he's good, man. He's really good. He's not busted. I feel like people are overrating him. Like he has he has so many openings that he can take advantage. Like, and I say that from personally fighting against him. Like, he's not all that great. He's great, but he's not all that great. I wouldn't say he's 
god tier at any any shape or form. Like he has so many openings, he can get taken advantage pretty easily. But he can also take advantage of you if you are not careful. Like his little um little cannonball thing, his little little, 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 little I don't know musket, his little musket that shoots a cannonball with the little sucky thingy. That thing is nuts. You can go under stage, shoot people out under the stage. You you can just grab people up while you're coming back to the stage if they try to edge guard you you just grab them and throw them back and they're dead <laughs> he's, he's nuts he's nuts uh but that's about the extent of how good he is like his match attacks are really strong he's really strong in general because he's a heavy character obviously and his recovery is really really good for heavy but he's not he's not god man like he people are like they're over hyping him man he's he's fine he's fine he's got so many openings he's 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 not He's not the greatest, but he's great. Don't get me wrong. He's he's good character. It's not not as broken as people are making him out to be. I think Mewtwo's better than him. I personally did a lot better with Mewtwo than K. Ro. Mewtwo is nasty. He's a nasty, nasty mama in this game. He will combo you. He will combo you and you won't even know why or how it happened and you'll be dead. He can combo you off stage into a meteor. He his combos just work so fluidly now. Before it used to be so floaty and inconsistent, now it just feels feels good. You can land a meteor into a forward air. Like, and hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. You can be in the air and meteor somebody against the stage and then forward air immediately, and it'll work. And then you can forward air again for free, and then you can meteor again if you're off stage. Like, he is nasty. He's a nasty, nasty, nasty guy. He has. The strongest projectile in the game, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I feel like Shadow Ball is the strongest projectile in the game. It does a ridiculous amount of damage, a ridiculous amount of knockback, and he can charge it for free and then move around with it. So he's he's just golden, man. His neutral air is just disgusting. It's nasty. It does so much damage. It has so much drag. If you quick fall from it, you can combo into whatever the hell you want to combo into. His tilts are all very long and very good in terms of like being able to combo. His grab game is amazing. He has reflect. He has disable is nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. You could potentially meteor somebody, because you can't tech meteors off the floor. So if you're already standing on the floor, you're just gonna get like kinda like think of it like a like a like a like a, like a discount footstool. And I feel like you would be able to meteor somebody into disable. And that's just nutty. I think you can even neutral A into disable, which is just why? Why is this character so good? But he's good. He's amazing. He's amazing. And I love it because he was he was my main in Melee. I loved him in Melee. And then when they brought him back as Match 4, I still loved him, but I didn't feel as good with him. Like, he felt very inconsistent. Now he's just... He's a powerhouse. He's just, He jumps in and wins. He wins games, man. And I only lost once with him, so there you go. Mewtwo's amazing. Uh, next, I have... Where are you at? Where are you at? Young Link. Young Link feels like Smash 4 Link on crack. Like, he feels like Link from Smash 4, but everything's better. If that makes any sense. Like, he feels faster. Not stronger, I wouldn't say stronger. But he feels faster. All his projectiles feel better. His grab game is still amazing. His combo game is still amazing. His forward air is still amazing. Like, he can do things and they will work. Guarantee they will work. You can bomb into explosion into like when the bomb explodes You can just shoot a fire which will make him go up even more and then you can even just jump up in forward air Like you can do whatever the hell you want Whatever the hell you want to do with young link if you were able to do stuff with link and smash 4 Just carry it over to young link and it'll be better. It'll work better. Everything about it will be better I promise you young link is just ridiculous. He's so good My god, this character is amazing. I love this character. I wouldn't say I still wouldn't say he's the best Link, in my opinion. Honestly, I don't think he is. A lot of people are like saying, you know, Young Link is best Link. I don't think so. I feel like, uh, you know what? Let's just let's just get on to the right right onto the next one because the next one is Link. And in my opinion, I don't know where he went. And in my opinion, he's much better. It's just that all his talent has been undiscovered. The stuff that I've been able to pull off with this dude is ridiculous. It's better than anything I've ever done in Smash 4 with Link. He's so strong. His bombs are stupid good. They're just really, really strong. Like, you can, for example, you can 
If your opponent is right, right in front of your face, you can throw the bomb at them into jab. The last hit of jab is going to hit the bomb and the opponent, send them both flying away at the same exact time. Blow up the bomb, bring them back to you, forward air, or whatever the hell you want to do, you can do. You can even, if you're both in the air and the opponent is right in front of you, you can throw the bomb at him. Forward slash grab the bomb, throw the bomb, forward slash grab the bomb, throw the bomb. You can literally do that in the air. I've done that to people. It's nuts. You can throw the boomerang, and at the peak of the boomerang, then throw the bomb. Like, pull out a bomb, throw the boomerang. At the peak of the boomerang, throw the bomb. The boomerang will hit the opponent. On the way back, um, it will hit the opponent, go through the opponent. The bomb will hit the opponent. On the way back, it will hit the opponent again, and then the bomb will explode. That's like 20-something damage for free. I love doing that to people. You can throw the bomb off stage, edge guard for free. Free. Like that edge guard is so good, it's nuts. This link is the best link. I don't care what anybody says. His forward uh, forward air, his up smash, his up B, everything he does is gonna kill you. Minus his down A. I feel like Young Link's down A and Toon Link's down A is still the strongest ones. Not down smash, just down A in the air. But Link is so good. Like this link is the best link ever. I don't care what anybody says. This is the best link that's ever existed in the history of all links, and he's he's just the best. Once people start discovering text with him, I swear to God, he's gonna go places. He's he's gonna be the top link of all links. I promise you. Um, yeah. Before I rant about Link for half an hour, let me just move on. <laughs> I love that character, man. This character was my main in like every Smash game. I played Link in every Smash game. And he is just easier to stay, man. Especially this link. Please keep that link. This link is... Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta move on. I gotta move on. I got a lot of characters to cover. Next, I got Corrin. Corrin, I feel like, is stronger than Link. In my opinion. In my personal experience, Corrin feels good. Feels amazing, even. Again, if you're playing male Corrin, that's fine and all you do you, but female Corrin is the right way to play her. So, whatever. Corrin is great. Corrin used to be busted. When Corrin first came out, she was broken. Her counter was way too strong. She was way too fast. She was way too strong in general. Her kill potential was just ridiculous. She was a ridiculous character when she first came out. And then they nerfed her, and she was still good. She was still really good. She received further nerfs in this game. Um, her counter now does still does a ton of damage. I think it has the highest multiplier in terms of damage for counters, but it does not kill at all anymore. It does not kill. You will not kill with counter. If you ever felt like you were being a cheap asshole for using counter, don't even worry about that ever again. Use counter all you like. You're open if you use it, so it's fine, but if you just get it off, you're gonna get a ton of damage, but you're not gonna kill anything. I promise you. It's not strong. It's not as good as it used to be. It's not broken at all. It feels good because it does a ton of damage, but it doesn't kill. So that feels balanced in my opinion. Uh, the travel distance from her pin to sliding things, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's not a big nerf in my opinion. I feel like it's fair, because it used to go way too far anyway. Um, but the pin happens so quickly that it's still a very good tool. All the smash attacks are really good. Her combo game is just nuts. Her combo game is her, 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 her down tilt into forward air, forward air, neutral air, whatever the hell, up air. Like, you can do whatever you want. Like, her combo game is so good. The best thing about Corrin, however, is neutral air. Neutral air frame traps for so long. It lingers on for freaking ever. You can literally just go up into the air and start forwarding for free, and the opponent is going to try to dodge it. If the opponent dodges it, they're yours. You do whatever you want. They can try to dodge it away from you, you just full, forward smash, stab the crap out of them, they're dead. You can do anything you want. Um, the draft that you get from her back air feels so much stronger. Like, you can get sent up stage, draft forward, jump, draft forward again, and then up B. Like, you get recover for free with Corrin. I don't know if that's all in my head, but I feel like you essentially get three jumps with Corrin. A lot of people, oh, because the, the up B got nerfed, the up B got nerfed a little bit. A lot of people are complaining about the up B being nerfed and the fact that Corrin just feels really shitty off stage. Incorrect, wrong, misinformed, get good, son. Corrin is amazing off stage. Like, for me personally playing it, her, like, I literally, he was one of the last characters I played because she is one of the last characters on the list. But it was well worth the wait, man. Corrin just feels so much better, in my opinion, than he ever did. You just, you you have to get used to the, the changes, you know, the way to play. He, she plays a little differently. Um, 
Paralyzy Bomb thingy is not as useful as it used to be. It doesn't feel that way, but I feel like that's because the game engine is so much faster that if you just stand there charging and hit, you're gonna get hit. Like, you, you wouldn't charge that off stage. that's just dumb. You wouldn't charge that on stage because you're just gonna get hit for it. Like, no one's gonna fall for that anymore. So, I would say just don't do that move as often. You can still use it, it's fine. But I feel like everything else that Korn has is so much better. So, I would say, Korn, amazing. Korn is fine. Korn's gonna be fine. Korn's gonna win tournaments, I promise. I don't know about that, but I feel like Korn is amazing. And then next at the top of the S tier, somebody that I feel like got robbed, which is Lucina. I feel like Link got robbed too, but Lucina got robbed the most. When I played Lucina, Lucina was one of the early characters because she is right after Marth. Um, and Marth came in in melee, so she was very early on the list. Lucina was the first character that I had the, the glorious opportunity to fight a level 9 Captain Falcon CPU. Now, <laughs> that may sound whatever to you. Go fight a level 9 Captain Falcon. I promise you, you will not have fun. This man is insane. Level 9 Captain Falcon CPU is, I believe, the best CPU in the entire game. Like, he is nuts. He's nutty. Now I've gotten used to it, so now I know how to fight him, but I still feel like it's the strongest CPU in the game. And I didn't know what to expect. I just went in thinking, I'm gonna fight Captain Falcon CPU. And he bodied me. And he destroyed me. I didn't stand a chance. I felt so humiliated and I lost my S plus rank for Lucina because of that. And I'm still salty about it because Lucina feels amazing. Better than Smash for Lucina? I don't know, man. I really don't know because I still, somewhere deep down, I still feel like Smash for Lucina was better, but I feel like I can make her work better in this game because of the fact that her whole game is just forward air, basically. If you play Lucina well, Forward air is like your best friend. Forward air and neutral air is like the best way to approach people. And you can force dodges for her and then just chase them after. But the problem with Lucina that I'm feeling is that she feels very floaty. I don't know if she's always felt floaty or maybe it's the fact that I've gotten used to faster characters in this game. But she feels floaty and I don't know if that's just me. But if you don't quick fall all her moves, she feels very slow in my opinion. Same thing with Marth, I guess. But I don't know, Lucina... In my opinion, when I played her in Smash 4, felt a lot different than Marth. Like she felt a little heavier, in my opinion. And Marth was the one that felt floaty, but she feels very floaty in this game. I know it's all in your head because, well, it's all in my head because the frame data is the exact same, the weight is the exact same, everything's the exact same. But now it actually feels that way. Now it actually feels like Lucina is very floaty, in my opinion. But I'm still amazing with her. Like I haven't lost the touch, the Lucina touch. Sadly, her run got robbed, and she would have been very high up on the S plus tier list, in my opinion, if she had made it. But she did not make it. And that is it for the S tier. We're gonna move on to E tier now. And E tier are people who only got three to two kills before they lost the run. Now these characters are not obviously good, but they're not F tier, so <laughs> it could be worse. Now the first character that I put here, so my worst E tier character, in my opinion, is Rosalina and Luma. And I hate Rosalina and Luma. I've always hated playing her. And I still do. I don't like playing Rosalina and Luma. She feels very boring to me. Um, just in general as a character. She doesn't feel fun. But she does feel a lot stronger. I will say that. She feels strong. She feels like if you enjoy Rosalina if you enjoy that thing, you will enjoy it a lot more in this one. She feels better in this one. But that's just me. And I personally didn't care for her in the last one, and I still don't, so I'm just gonna move on. I don't know. If I have to say anything about her, it's the fact that she does feel a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, then we have... Where'd he at? Where'd he at? I saw him before, there he is. Villager. Villager... I, I, never, I was never good at Villager, and I'm still not good at Villager. Uh, I seen what Billiger can do. In my opinion, the Billiger CPU is the second best CPU in the game. And I seen what they can do, and it's crazy, and it's good. Uh, the best thing I liked about Billiger was throwing bowling balls off the ledge. That was fun. That was really fun, in my opinion. But I'm not good with Billiger. But Billiger still feels great. If you like Billiger, I'm sure you'll love Billiger still. Um, I don't think there's anything worse about Billiger. So, like I said, if you like Billiger before, Billiger is even better now. Uh, the next character I have on this list is very low on the list. 
Uh, so far, all these characters only got two wins. Uh, the next character is very low on the list, and I'm very disappointed in that. And that's because I can't figure him out. And I'm so sad because I love playing Captain Falcon. He was S tier for free in Smash 4 for me. Like, I loved Captain Falcon. I still love him, but God, he just he feels way too inconsistent. Like, before, I used to be able to just, just down throw up, bear forward A, and just, just check up, you're done, goodbye. Uh, Falcon Punch for free. Um, go off stage and have fun, and now I feel like if I go off stage, there's a pretty big chance I might not make it back. I don't know. Captain Falcon just feels stiff, in my opinion, and he felt very fluid and very quick and very good. I feel like his speed might have not gotten any buffs at all, which is bad because now everybody's faster. So, like, he feels very average, I would say. And it's kind of sad, because, like, he used to feel really fast and really strong, but really hard to control. But now he feels normal, I guess, because everybody's stronger, everybody's faster, so what does he have that nobody else has? Feels average, man. And it sucks, because I love this guy, man. Which is weird, because I don't care about F-Zero, but... Eh. Damn, man. It's it's really disheartening to see Captain Falcon this low on this list. What are you going to do, man? Uh, next, I have Mario, another character that was pretty high on my list before. Um, and that's because I love playing Mario. Mario was just fun to play with, because he was easy to play with. He, his combo game was really easy. He was just he was an easy character, man. And now he's just not... And it's not because he's not easy, he's still easy, it's just not satisfying anymore. Like before it used to be a lot more satisfying to pull off a combo and just get 40% or 60% or kill for free. But now it just feels very inconsistent and it doesn't feel as fun. You know what I mean? Like he, I don't think his combo game was busted, it was just very easy to pull off. And I get why they would take that out because, you know, people probably broke their, their up tilts playing Mario. but. I don't know, he just doesn't feel as fun as he used to, man. Uh, next, I have Palatina. Now, Palatina is only this low because I didn't have a chance to get good at her. But I feel like Palatina is really good. She's really strong. Her projectile game is really powerful. Her op smash is stupid. It's just, it's broken. I don't care what anybody says. I hate that move. It's the move I hate fighting the most in the entire roster is her op smash because it just comes out so quick. It has all the range in the universe. And it just hits for free, it feels like. She's really good. She has a counter and a reflector all together now. So it's like, you win. No matter what you press, you win. Um, her little ex forward, her 4B explosion thing is really good. Her auto reticle seems more accurate. Um, her teleport is free and lagless, which is nuts. You just, if you're in a bad situation, teleport away and you'll be fine. Like, she, she's good. She's amazing. But I feel like I wasn't amazing with her. Her tilts kill! Her tilts are so good. Her up tilt, her down tilt, and her forward tilt are really, really strong. They're just spinny, 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 and they're really, really strong. Her smash attacks are really good. Um, her back air, I believe, or forward air, one of those two, is really, really strong, too. She's just amazing, man. She's an amazing character. If you wanted to play Palatina or you main Palatina, congratulations, you got an amazing character in this game. She is fantastic. And she should be. She's a goddess. For God's sake. <laughs> Get it? Next I have, uh, where is he? This guy. Why is your picture so tiny? Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt I was really good with in Smash 4. His trap game still feels really good, but it feels like it leaves him more vulnerable because everybody's faster so they can get around his traps a lot better. But he still feels amazing. I didn't do good with him, but... I bet somebody who main Duck Hunt is probably having a field day somewhere out in the world right now because this character is just really, really good. It doesn't feel like he got any worse, but I don't know. I was never amazing with Duck Hunt, but I was able to get amazing results out of him because he just felt busted in Smash 4, in my opinion. Nobody really thought so, but in my opinion, he felt really, really strong in Smash 4. Uh, these characters all got two kills for their entire run. The next character is coming up at three. And the worst character out of the ones that got three for me was this guy, Rob. Rob feels amazing to fight against. Me personally playing Rob did not feel amazing at all. And the, 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 the aerial moves feel very laggy, especially neutral air feels very laggy. It feels like you press neutral air and then 
a little later it'll come out. It feels like you have to play in the future in order to be good with ROM. And I feel like the CPU does that very well, and I feel like some people who main ROM may be able to do that very well. I had to do that with Shulk in the last game, and I tried to do that as much as possible, but it was very hard to play in the future because I didn't have Shulk's mission. But if you have Shulk's mission and you like Rob, I feel like you'll be amazing with Rob because Rob just feels amazing in this game. I'm just not good with Rob. Uh, next, we have another character who was really high up on my list before, and that was very, very low. And Falco, it's just, I don't know, man. Falco just, if he feels really good, but I feel really bad with him. Like, I was pretty decent with him in Smash 4, but in this game, I just... I I don't see myself playing Falco anymore. I just suck with him, and I don't know why. I just do. Uh, next we have Lucas. Falco feels amazing. Let me just reiterate a little bit. Uh, Falco's forward B is really good now, except if you're shielded, you're screwed. Um, Falco feels disgusting off stage, and on the stage, the combo game is really strong. So, Falco feels better than he used to. But I just don't get him yet. I haven't. I don't have the famous idea of how to approach being Falco. But he feels better, so there he is. Lucas, I suck with. I've always sucked with, and I feel like Lucas has always been the worst Ness. Like if you if you have to pick between Ness and Lucas, you should 100% always go Ness because Lucas just feels like a weaker Ness all around in general. Um, if you main Lucas because you love Lucas, good for you. But I hope you understand you are maining the inferior of the two. And I don't mean that to be a jerk or anything, I'm being 100% legitimate, but I don't know, if you like Lucas, go ahead, play Lucas. It just, to me, it feels like Ness is always going to be the better choice. In every iteration, it always feels that way, even in this one, it feels that way. Lucas feels stronger, feels better than he did, but it doesn't feel like he has any options. It doesn't feel like he has a lot of options, his up smash is like pretty much the only thing he can really do to win, and everything else just feels like a weaker version of what he can do to kill you, and he can kill you for free. He can't. So that's why I would say pick Ness 100% of the time. Lucas, I don't like Lucas. I'm sorry, never did. Sorry, there you are. Bayonetta is next. Bayonetta is still Bayonetta. I was never good with Bayonetta, so Bayonetta was not going to make it that high in my list. But Bayonetta still feels like Bayonetta. Bayonetta's combo game is still really good. She does a lot of damage, but she feels more like Sheik now. She doesn't have a lot of kill options. It doesn't feel like she does. Um, she can still Witch Time and kill you. But it's not as busted as it used to be, and her combo game doesn't feel as busted as it used to be either. It feels a little more complex to pull off, but that's fine. Like, I feel like people who used to play Bayonetta in Smash 4 are still going to be able to do the same things that she used to do in Smash 4. It's just that it's she doesn't have a lot of kill potential, in my opinion, but she still feels really strong. She feels amazing. Bayonetta is still Bayonetta. She might have gotten nerfed, but she still feels like her. So if you love Bayonetta, and you legitimately play Bayonetta because you love Bayonetta, you can still play Bayonetta and do really well. You're not going to win for free like you used to in Smash 4. She's not going to win you tournaments, and it's not going to be because of the character and because not because you're skilled, but you can still play Bayonetta if you really played her because you actually liked her. I'm looking at all of you Bayonetta mains who said that you like Bayonetta because of Bayonetta, not because she made you win tournaments. I don't believe it for a second that you, you didn't pick her because you made you win tournaments. Or whatever, we're not going to talk about that right now. Anyway, we're going to move on. <laughs> Before I go into a Burn the Witch banter. Anyway, the, the Witch has been burned and the Witch is still amazing, so... Great. Sheik is next. Sheik? I was really, really, really good with the Smash Bros. I loved playing Sheik in Smash Bros. And I still do. But I suck with Sheik now. She, he, feels very good, feels very strong, but very lacking in the killing department, even more so than she did in Smash 4. And I don't know if that's just me, but I don't know. She she felt like you could kill easily from down throw into up air into up air, or like just, I don't know, just uh, bouncing fish really early off stage and be able to kill, but now it feels like bouncing fish might not be as strong as it used to be. Um, Needles feel a little better, I would say, because like the aerial needles go diagonally down now, and that that's really cool actually. Um, the explosion thing for edge guarding is still really good. Um, she still feels really good. It's just that for some reason I just wasn't able to get the same results I was able to with with her before. Like before, I felt like I was just I don't know Sonic. Like I felt really fast and being really able to take advantage of openings and get combos in for free. But now I feel like those combos aren't connecting like they used to, or maybe I'm, I just, I didn't have enough time to get used to her, maybe, because 
the fact that she's there means that she only got she only got three kills basically. So I, I don't know I don't know if I just didn't have enough time to get good with Sheik. Sheik still feels great. I just didn't feel great with her. But Sheik is at the top of the E tier in my list. And now we're gonna move on to the S tier. And the reason why it's because the F tier is a lot of these characters. A lot of these characters are F tier. I didn't play with the Mies. I don't know if I said that. I don't think I said that. But I didn't play with them. I was gonna. But then I feel like nobody's really gonna be able to play them in tournaments. So I didn't pick Mies. I don't want to play Mies. I was gonna. I was gonna give them a chance. And they, they, they feel really good. But I don't care, man. I don't really care for them, honestly. I'm not gonna play Mies. So Mies, no. No thank you. The reason I'm gonna do S tier first is because if I do F tier first and fill out this list with pretty much all of these characters, you're gonna be able to know for sure who is on the S tier. And then that's that's just the best tier there is, so I wanna leave those for last. I mean, I wanna do those now, so that they're not left for last, and then you know, oh, all of these people are on S tier. Yeah, no. You wouldn't be able to guess just from looking at these who's gonna be in S tier. So, it could be Fox, for all you know. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So let's start with the worst person on S+. Plus. And that's Pit. Pit got to S plus for free, essentially. And which is why I was saying that I feel like Dark Pit got robbed out of that S plus place. Because he got up there for free. But then Dark Pit, I had some unlucky run. And then another unlucky run. And then that was it. Dark Pit was not allowed to, to be up there with his brethren. But what are you going to do, you know? But Pit is amazing. Pit feels Really strong, really good. I, I really enjoy playing Pit. I enjoy playing Dark Pit even more. Sadly, he was not able to get up there, but I feel like he should be up there and above Pit because I feel like he's even better than Pit, in my opinion. But whatever. But yeah, Pit is great. Like I said with Dark Pit, like really fast, really strong, a lot of tools, a lot of potential. Just great char character overall. Like before, he just he annoyed the hell out of me, but really, really good. Next character is a character that I feel like deserved to be up here all along, never got the chance, and that's Ganon. Oh my god, is Ganon good in this game. Ganon is so strong, so ridiculously strong, you can do 30-40% to 40 for free in one hit. He is like Ike on steroids, and he is not sl as slow as he used to. He used to be so slow, and I hated playing him in Smash 4. He was just so boring to me in Smash 4, because he was too slow, and... You, I felt like I couldn't do anything with him. Like, I want him to do things, but I would just get punished for even trying. And now, it just feels like I try, and then I win. His forward air is amazing. His neutral air is ridiculous. Offstage, ridiculous. His um, down throw into, into neutral air or into forward air? Oof, so much damage for free. Um, all his smash attacks are stupid. They do so much shield pressure, they do so much damage, they're just stupid. His um his warlock kick, or whatever it is that it's called, is really good. Um his warlock punch is stupid. Um his axe kick thing destroys shields. You should never you should never block that. If you block that you're dead. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And now it feels like it's a little better to pull it off than before. Before it felt like if you just lifted your leg up. You were just saying, just hit me. I don't want to play anymore. But now you lift your leg up and people are like, uh-uh. No, no, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not going to mess with that. Nope. He's really strong. He's really good and really strong. And I'm glad. I'm happy for him. Because all you people who are like low tier, you were just barely above Jigglypuff all your life. And now, there you are at the top. Enjoying life to the grandest extent. And I hope that someday Jigglypuff gets there too. But there he is. That man. So good. Love it. Love playing with it. Uh, next, I'm just going to put Pokemon Trainer. I'm not going to put the Pokemon themselves. The Pokemon Trainer, freaking amazing. Didn't lose a single game with Pokemon Trainer because the synergy between Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard is just ridiculous. I hated playing Charizard in Smash 4. He felt bad on his own. But having Squirtle and Ivysaur with him, that is the biggest buff in gaming history, the fact that they chased his down B, his Rock Smash, into being better characters. Which, I'm joking. Charizard has his pros. 
like obviously you would use them to get killed and to tank stuff and stay alive longer and for recovery. Yes, Charizard wins. He's also the fastest one out of the three. Surprisingly enough, people think it's Squirtle, but actually Charizard is faster than the other ones. So, yeah, he's good. But together as a team, whew, we're good. They're freaking good. Squirtle can just chain moves together for free. Like he could just go in and just uh, neutral air into forward air, 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 forward, air, forward, air, forward air, and forward air on top of that too. And then down air could just combo into anything that you want to, like down tilt or up tilt or whatever the hell you want to combo it into. Squirtle just combos for free, comes back to the stage almost for free because of his forward B. Um, he's just amazing. Ivysaur, freaking fantastic character. Like his zoning is amazing. He's got a lot of kill power. He's got his, his grab moves, like his grab combos are so on point. You can literally up tilt somebody into neutral B. Like he's just, he's good. He's an amazing character. Like Ivysaur, you don't mess with. You, you, it's hard to get near him and that's great. He's great. So if you play Pokemon Trainer, what I would recommend is if you get your opponent to 50% or above, switch over to Ivysaur and start zoning the hell out of them until they're in kill potential, in kill percentage. If you yourself are in 50%, switch over to Ivysaur because you're going to get killed easily if you're Squirtle. Squirtle can die from a forward smash from all the heavies and just in just one go if he's above 50. So don't stick around with Squirtle, he'll die fast. Ivysaur will take a hit a little better. And he's able to zone people so you can get more damage. If you get them anywhere between 90 and above, switch over to Charizard and win. Basically take that stock. You have that stock. It's yours, just take it. If you're above 100%, switch to Charizard anyway and stay with Charizard because he will stay alive the longest out of the three. If you play this character as a team and not just play one of the Pokemon and then they call it a day, like if you want to main Squirtle, go ahead. If you want to main Ivysaur, go ahead. If you want to main Charizard, go ahead. But you should play them all effectively. If you are able to play them all well, this character is so good, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how well these characters play together. It's just... He's so good, man. He's amazing. I love this character. And I didn't even care about him in Brawl because he was boring in Brawl because of the stamina thing, because of the, the super effective moves. Like uh, Charizard took more damage from water moves. Ivysaur took more damage from fire moves. And then Squirtle was fine because oh, well, he, had, he took more damage from electric moves, which a lot of characters had electric properties. So it was terrible. It was bad. But now it's good. Now it's amazing. It feels great to switch back and forth. You can switch in the middle of your opponent's attack and take no damage. Like... This character is so good. I can't wait until people just get so good with him. It's not even funny. I would love to. I would love to play Pokemon Trainer, but I don't feel like I'm ready for Pokemon Trainer yet. Like, the tournament is like in a few days, and I don't think I'm ready as a Pokemon Trainer. But I might, because I really enjoy playing Pokemon Trainer. I also might with Link. Not any other Links, just Link. <coughs> so I might try to main Link, and Pokemon Trainer might be one of my, my secondary picks. But Pokemon Trainer is amazing. Next we have my boy Ike. My boy Ike was my main in Brawl, and he feels as amazing as he did in Brawl. In Brawl he felt great to me because everybody was slow in Brawl, so like he didn't feel too slow. But in Smash 4 he felt too slow and he felt like you just have to pray that your moves will hit. In this game, when I first picked him up I was like, you know what, because everybody's like, Ike is amazing in this game. And I didn't see it at first, and so I picked him up to do his run, and I was like, alright, you know what, Ike is pretty decent, he's alright. He doesn't feel as good as people say he is, he feels like Smash 4 Ike just a little better. And then I started seeing the way he can frame trap you, and I'm like, alright, you know what, maybe Ike is pretty decent. Maybe he is pretty good, he can frame trap you pretty well, he can... He hurts, he hurts pretty bad, he's he's just, he's not slow, he's like a faster, a little faster, a little weaker Ganon. He's good, he's great. And then I started seeing the things he can do in the air. Oh my god, his up air, forward air, down tilt into forward air is so much better now. He's just disgusting in the air. And I'm like, yo, Ike is amazing. Ike is for free amazing top tier character for sure. Like, he's just so good. I feel like his counter might be the strongest in the game. Might be. I don't think it is, but I feel like it's really strong. He's, he's just so good, man. Ike is good. Finally, Ike. I love him. He's one of my favorite characters, so I'm so happy that he's so good. But I don't know if I'll main him, but I love that he's up there. Next up, I have Ridley, which surprised the hell out of me. Ridley is so good. 
Ridley is really good. A lot of people seem to think otherwise, but I feel like Ridley is so strong. Like, Ridley can kill for free. Easy. He can kill. Forward Smash kills so early for Ridley. Um, Ridley can edge guard you with his fireballs for free. Like, he could just stand there a couple of miles away from the from the edge. He doesn't even have to be at the ledge. He just stand a couple of miles away from the ledge and just fireball, and they'll all start shooting diagonally down at you. So, if you try to cross, you, you have to cross a wall of fire in order to try to get back to stage. It's ridiculous. And then, if you're in advantage with, with Ridley, if you're up a stock, you can literally grab them and drop them as Ganondorf used to do, except they can still mash out of it like Ganon used to do. Well, like Ganon does now. <laughs> But I feel like you have no chance to come back if you have no recovery. If you're Pit, if you're Jigglypuff, if you're Kirby, um, if you're Pikachu, fine, you're probably going to make it back to stage and he's going to die. But why would you do that to them? If you do it to a character like Ike, like Chrome, like um, Richter, like Cloud, like Incineroar, you grab any of the characters that are not going to make it from the bottom of the stage, like from the bottom barrier, and they're dead. There's nothing they can do about it. It's over. Game over. Um, his grab thing is ridiculous. You can smash out of you can mash out of it. So like if you're at a low percentage and he grabs you from one corner and tries to drag you into the next corner, you're gonna mash out of it. It's fine. But it does a ton of damage and it kills. It kills pretty early, it kills really effectively, and it's just good. Um, his down B does not connect easily. It's very, very hard to connect his down B, so it's fair that it does the amount of damage that it does, but if you connect down B, you pretty got that you pretty much got that stock. You, you won that stock. If you hit somebody with down B, they're in kill percentage, no matter what. Like, it could be at zero, and now they're in kill percentage. He's really strong. He's pretty fast. He's good on stage. A lot of people are complaining about his recovery. Why? He can literally forward B, and then he has three jumps for free, and then up B. How is his recovery bad? His recovery is amazing. I don't understand. I don't understand why people are saying that like, his recovery is terrible. He's great. He's strong as hell, he's just fast as hell. His game in the air is just good. He's got multi-hit moves in the air and on the floor. Like, come on, man. Ridley's great. Ridley's amazing. And I didn't expect to. I didn't even care. Uh, next, we have Simon. Now, the reason why I feel like Richter got robbed is because I feel like I played better with Richter than with Simon. But by the time I got to Richter, I was already burned out from playing Simon. So I was kind of like having 20 matches back and forth, like back to back with just Simon. <clears throat> Which is fine, but like I said, if you don't stick to their game plan, you're gonna have a bad time. And by the time I started having a bad time with Richter, and I realized that it's too late, Richter's already A tier. I feel like Richter was actually more fun to play with than Simon, and it makes no sense because they're pretty much identical. I just, I guess aesthetically, I like Richter a lot better. But yeah, Simon S plus for free. Like, if you play Simon correctly, you win. You win. Like, I don't care who you are, I don't care how good you are at the game, if you're good with Simon, and you play Simon like you should, you win. Simon is good. Simon is really strong. They have weaknesses. Sure, everybody has weaknesses. But their zoning game is so powerful. They're, you can, if you try to approach them, they're going to whip you. And they're going to whip you from miles away. Just get away from me. And then you're going to be like, right, I'm sorry, I'm getting hit for free. And then if you actually manage to get up to them, they could just slide and kick away from you. And then it's back to throwing shit at you. It's like, these characters are nuts. They're nuts. Most... I mean, if you're playing in a competitive level, you want to have the middle of the stage. If you have the middle of the stage, you're in an advantage. If you have the corner of the stage, you're at a disadvantage. Obvious, right? But with Richter and Simon, I feel like if you're at the corner of the stage and the other player is at the other corner, you're in an advantage. You, you're gonna win. You, you win that exchange no matter what. And then if they start closing the gap, you can extend it again and keep winning. Like, as long as you keep doing that, you win. They're, it, they're hard as hell to approach. Um, they're hard as hell to get on their faces. Once you get on their faces, they're dead. But good luck getting there, you know what I mean? Like, that character's just nuts. It's nuts. It's good. It's really good. Uh, next up on that list, we have Lucario. I'm just kidding. Lucario's not on that list. We got Samus. Samus was another surprise to me, because I didn't like playing Samus in Smash 4. I hated Samus in Smash 4, and I wanted to love Samus in Smash 4 because I love Metroid. Metroid is one of my favorite games on the handheld consoles. Like, the Game Boy Advance had some of the best Metroid games, in my opinion. Metroid Fusion and Metroid Zero Mission were, like, some of the best Metroid games out there. Um, the, N the SNES Metroid games were just 
fantastic also. Uh, then you have the new Metroid game, the, re the remake for Metroid 2 on the 3DS, which is freaking great. I love Metroid, and I wanted to love Samus just as much as I love Metroid, but I couldn't because Samus sucked at balls. But now Samus feels amazing. Like, Samus feels great. And I don't think people realize that. Like, I feel like people still think that Samus is still the same low-tier piece of crap that she's always been. But you'd be wrong. Samus has so much kill potential now. Samus has such a great mix-up game now. Samus can break shields for free with her charge shot. Like, you can fish out a shield with one of her missiles, and if they block the missile, their shield is half gone. And if you throw a charge shot on top of that, that shield is broken, and then you have a stack for free. If they're above 60% or 70%, <coughs> you can destroy with forward smash, or you can just charge up another charge shot and blast them in the face. Samus is amazing. Um, Samus' combo game is so good now. Up air, combos into whatever you want it to combo. Um, neutral air, I mean forward air is so good for edge guarding. Um, down, down air is pretty decent, but it doesn't meter consistently in my opinion, but still really good. Uh, coming back to the stage with down B is really decent. It's not great, but it's better than just falling onto the stage for no reason. Um, her zoning is really good. Her grab game is pretty decent, um, but where she shines the most, in my opinion, are her kicks. Her back air kick destroys people. It's deadly as hell. Her up air kick just combos for free into whatever you want it to come. You can up air into forward air. Uh, you can up air and then quick fall, leave them on a platform, and then just up smash. Like, sh she's good. She's really good. And you know who I feel is better? Dark Samus. Dark Samus is nuts. Dark Samus feels like Samus, but better in my opinion. And the reason why is if you don't fully charge her charge shot, it paralyzes them for like a quick second, but that second is enough for you to get in and combo for free. You can literally charge shot, grab, slam down, forward air, forward air. Like, it's so nutty. Like, Dark Samus is nuts. Dark Samus is amazing. The fully charge shot version of Dark Samus doesn't feel as strong as Samus is. Samus is feels like it's better than Dark Samus, but it could just all be in my head. I don't know for sure because I haven't looked at any, any data, but... I feel like Dark Samus in general, in terms of like the melee aspect of Dark Samus, feels stronger than Samus. Like Samus feels like she has a stronger projectile game, but Dark Samus feels better in terms of like melee. Like all her like moves feel stronger in my opinion, or his moves. I don't know what to call it. I'm gonna say it. It's just a better character in general. That sounds weird. I don't want to say it. I'm gonna call her 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 because it's Samus. Fuck it. Um, but yeah, Dark Samus feels great. Amazing character. I might pick up Samus if. Given the chance, again, I don't feel like I have enough time to actually lab out Dark Samus enough to get really good with her, but I feel like Dark Samus is just an amazing character in general, and I'm definitely going to keep playing Dark Samus because it was fun. It was so much fun to play Dark Samus, man. Um, and then my best character. So these characters, that's the order. The next character is hands down my best character in this game. And this character is a character that I wanted to main in this game, and I'm so glad that I was able to. And that's Krom. Now Krom was a roller coaster of emotion for me. Because when Krom first got announced, I was so happy I lost it. I was just like, it's my boy. My boy is finally here, man. That's my boy. When Smash 4 was announced and they announced Lucina, I got pissed because I wanted Krom. I wanted Krom more than anybody else from that game. From Awakening, I think it is, Fire Emblem Awakening. I didn't care about any other characters. I didn't want Robin. I didn't want Lucina. I wanted Krom. And Krom just didn't show up. And I was just like, damn it, man. I wanted Krom. And I got Lucina instead. I was so pissed and I hated her. She ended up becoming my main. So I guess it worked out in the end. Now, I suck with Roy. I stated it before. I sucked with Roy in Smash 4. And this was one of the concerns going forward for me. Because I sucked with Roy. And Krom was Roy's Echo Fighter. So I felt like I was going to suck even more with Roy, with Krom because of the fact that I'm not good with Roy. But, I'm amazing with Krom. And I don't know if that's just the character carrying me, but he's so fast, he's so strong, he's so good, he felt amazing. And the reason why he felt like a roller coaster is because when he first showed up, I saw that Uppy and I was like, Oh no, oh no, this character, no, don't do that to him. Why did you do that to him? Like, at first, I'm like, oh my god, he's Roy. Like, I saw his moves, and I was like, he's Roy. And then he did Abby, and I'm like, he's Ike? He's everybody. And then I'm like, no, he's just he's just Roy with Ike's Abby. That's all it is. 
but it's not Ike's upbeat. It's not the same as Ike's upbeat. He doesn't shoot his sword out first. He just slashes and then jumps. So there is no throw sword and then go get it. Like he just kind of does it. He has hit armor for days when he first does it. But at the top of it, he doesn't. But he spins around with his sword. So he's got a pretty decent amount of coverage when he's doing it. And the best part of it all is that it spikes. It spikes at the top. And it always kills the opponent first. It never kills Krom first. There's been one instance that I've ever seen in my entire life that it's killed Krom first, or it went to sudden death, I believe. It, it wasn't even like Krom died first, they died at the same time. But, I'll take sudden death if I have to. But just having the option to kill you first before I die is nuts. Krom is scary offstage. He can get edge guarded for free, that's his biggest weakness. Being edge guarded offstage is his biggest weakness because he can't counter offstage, because if he counters offstage, he's not coming back to stage. If you don't have a jump and you counter, you're dead. You died. So the best thing you can do to come back to stage is try to dodge into the ledge or just swing your sword at the opponent who's coming at you to try to hit them and then just come back to stage anyway. But it's 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 hard to get on stage with him. That's the only problem he has. Other than that, he's fantastic. He's nuts. He's too fast. He's too strong. He was a roller coaster of emotion for me because all the top players were like, Krom is going to suffer. Roy is a much better Krom. Krom is going to be terrible because of his recovery. Roy is looking to be the best character in the game. He's looking to be one of the best characters in the game. He's top tier for free. Roy, Roy, Roy. Krom sucks. And I was like, I kind of see it. I agree. Damn it. I, I always wanted Krom to be amazing. But I guess he's not. Day one, as soon as I get Krom, I start playing Krom. And I'm like, what are people talking about? This character is amazing. This character is the greatest character I've ever played with, in my opinion. Immediately fell in love with him. And then literally a few days later, people were like, yo, Krom is broken. Krom is the best character. And you know what? I'm not going to listen to anybody anymore, and neither should you. Just make your own opinion based on your own experience, like I did myself, basically. Krom is my best character. Hands down. Like, I want Lucina to still be my best character, but it's not happening, man. Krom is just too good. He's too good. He's too fast. He's too strong. He combos for free. He kills combo for free. <laughs> like, he's just nuts. I love this character. This character is... It's just life, man. He's gonna get nerfed. I know it. We all know it. But I don't care. I'm loving it right now, and I'm probably gonna love it forever, because... What are they gonna do? Just make him a little weaker? Fine, go ahead, make him a little weaker, I don't care. Like, he still feels great. Like, he's just so fast, he's so good, he's just... Ah, this character. This character's amazing. I love this character. And I'm so glad that I did, because I wanted to so bad. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to the F tier. Take all this hype and just go into the worst of the worst, in my opinion. And that is gonna be, let's see, and Peach. I suck with this character. And this character, I know is top tier. I know she has the potential. I know she has the combo game. I know she is fantastic. I, 100%, suck with them. There's nothing I could do about that. I just, I'm terrible. Peach Daisy player, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I let I let everybody down. And next I have Isabel. Again, I know the character's pretty decent. I know she's good. I can't. I can't for the life of me, man. And then one that surprised me is this guy right here. Fox feels too fast for his own good. Like he feels like he's so fast that you can't control it. The CPU does it just fine, but I feel like as a Fox player, you might have a hard time actually getting this character to work. Like, it just, it didn't feel like it worked, you know? Just Fox felt weird. I'm just gonna go through all of these really fast, because we have all these characters are coming in here, pretty much. Uh, Bowser Jr. is next. I was pretty decent with Bowser Jr. Feels a lot worse in this game. I don't know what they did to make him feel that way, but he doesn't feel as strong as he did in Smash 4. He doesn't feel as annoying as he did in Smash 4. I was pretty decent with Bowser Jr. in Smash 4, and in this game, I'm just terrible. Um, I feel like if I had a little more time with him, I would have been able to start figuring it out, but it wasn't happening. Um, I suck with these guys. They're not by any means bad. I just suck with them. Uh, Ryu and Ken, I just I couldn't get any kills with them. I don't know what it is. I was never good with Ryu, but now I feel like I'm even worse with Ryu. So There you go. All these characters got zero kills and just got bodied. Now we move on to characters that actually got one kill at least. 
Uh, Game & Watch felt really strong and really fun to play with. I'm just terrible with Game & Watch. Um, then next is King Dedede, who also felt really strong and really good, but I just suck with him. Um, Wolf! I don't know, man. Wolf just doesn't feel good to me. He feels really slow, he feels really stiff. He doesn't feel good, you know what I mean? Like, Falco and Fox feel really fast and really good, but Fox, the Wolf just doesn't, just doesn't. He just feels really stiff, and I don't know. I have a friend who plays Wolf, and he's really good with Wolf, and fine. I can, I can see the potential in Wolf, but at the same time, I don't see how this character is going to be up there with all the other people, you know? But, you know, I mean, if you like him, good for you. Uh, DDD, I suck with him. Um, the only reason I kept losing with DDD, because... DDD, with Diddy. The only reason I kept losing with Diddy is because I kept effing up his recovery. But his banana is so good, it's still really busted. You just throw the banana forward, smash for free, up, throw the banana up, smash for free. Like, he could just kill for free, basically. He still feels really good, really strong at zoning, really good at spacing the opponent and just then getting in their face b within a second. Just zoning to in your face within a second. He's really strong. He feels really strong, but I'm just not good with him. Um, then we have Meta Knight, who everybody's like creaming over, and I just don't see it. But then again, I was never good with Meta Knight. I kind of wanted to be good with Meta Knight in Brawl, but I still couldn't get the hang with it. And if I couldn't get good with Meta Knight in Brawl, then there's no chance for me to get be good with Meta Knight. Um, Greninja feels really good. Greninja feels really fast and really strong, but all his moves feel very laggy. Like, especially his forward air and back air, they feel really bad, in my opinion. And those are some really good kill options if you're, like, edge guarding. so I don't know. The character felt okay, I didn't feel good with him, you know? Uh, who's next? Then we have... Uh, Snake. I suck with Snake. Snake is by no means a bad character, Snake is amazing. I'm just terrible with Snake. It's just like Zelda. Terrible with Zelda. But Zelda feels much better than she did in Smash 4, for sure. She feels like... If I would have to like, give her a rank, she'd probably be S or A. But, I'm not good with her. Just based on what I've seen, or what she can do, and just the way she felt. The way she could set up the traps with her knight feels so much better. And she just feels like a better character in general. So, Zelda good. Zelda good. Lucario is actually decent. Um, he let me down in Brawl and Smash 4 because I thought, you know, Lucario was going to be a really cool character. But he really let me down. But in this game, he feels so powerful. I'm just not good with him. But he felt really powerful. Um, then we have Jigglypuff, who I actually played with casually in Smash 4 and was able to get pretty decent results with, but in this game, I don't know. <coughs> Jigglypuff feels kind of the same. A few a few more buffs here and there, but... I mean, if you buff the worst character in the game, and Ganon's all the way up there, and Jigglypuff is still down here, um, I see a little bit of an inconsistency there, but... What are you gonna do, man? Jigglypuff will always be Jigglypuff. What are you gonna, what are you gonna do? And then I got Kirby, who was actually... I was actually amazing with Kirby in Smash 4, and I feel terrible with Kirby in this game. Maybe I just didn't have enough time to figure him out. I don't know what it is. He just doesn't feel as good as he used to. Like, his combo game doesn't feel like it links up as good as it used to. Now it feels like it's more reliant on down A, and before it used to be really cool to just uh, forward throw into forward A, into grab into forward throw into forward A, into down A. Like, you were able to, like, drag people off to the off stage and then just kill them. In this game, it doesn't feel like you could do that. Um, he feels a little laggy, in my opinion. Like, he feels just as fast as he did in Smash 4, which is bad because everybody else is faster. So, <clears throat> yeah, Kirby, not as strong as he used to be, in my opinion. And then Inkling, which everybody is like, Inkling is the best character in the game? Probably. I just, I'm not, I'm trash with Inkling. I can't. I've been trying to get good with Link, Inkling because he, she feels really fun to play with. She she looks really cool and really fun to watch, but <clears throat> I just can't do it. It's not in me to do it. So there you go. That's the whole list. This is this is how I fare with all the characters in the game. Um, we'll see how Piranha Plant does, but so far, I based on my own skill level and based on how good the characters are, this kind of makes sense to me. Like looking at the list. I kind of 
like yeah this describes how i am with these characters and i wouldn't have known that if i hadn't played them and in my opinion i would say you should try this yourself i would say you should go through all these characters and do the same exact thing i did to figure out what characters you like because you never know for example um samus didn't give a crap about his match for ridley wasn't even going to try him that much honestly uh pokemon trainer i was going to try but i didn't think it was going to be that good pit hell no never never would have played pit um k Rool, i probably wouldn't have played um we the trainer i never would have played bowser i never would have even thought uh dk i never would have even thought wario no olimar hell no like all these characters were pretty high up there and santa roar um dark pit toon link like all these characters i i i didn't care for and now i'm in love with them and like characters like captain falcon Sheik, um curvy like these characters that i used to love playing with in smash 4 mario um duck hunt falco i'm not i'm not good with them anymore and i want to be but i can't uh i did worse with pichu than with pikachu but i still feel like pichu is better it's just that i feel like i couldn't get used to this i said that already but I feel like Pichu would, if I keep working at it with Pichu, I feel like Pichu's gonna be S plus for free. Uh, maybe Pikachu too, but I just, I don't, eh. I really enjoyed Ice Climbers, I enjoyed um, Yoshi, I enjoyed Pit, like all these characters that I would have never even tried if I hadn't done this, that you never know, man. So just, just go out there, turn on your Switch and start playing every single character. I promise you, you're gonna discover things that you didn't even know you liked. And you're going to discover that things that you thought you liked, you might not even like anymore. I don't know. This is how it worked. And, and I had a lot of fun doing it, man. I mean, <clears throat> if you... All of these characters... All of this analysis was actually done throughout 529 battles. That's right. While I was testing all these characters out, I got the milestone for a thousand battles. It's crazy, right? I play this game way too much. But hands down, Prom, best character in my opinion, for me, at least personally, he feels like my, my best character yet. Even better than I ever watched with Lucina, Link, or Cloud. Like, Prom just feels like he fits me like a glove. Like, he's just loving. I love this character so much. Um, Samus, I'm definitely going to try to second Samus. I feel like she's going to be my second pick, and then maybe followed by Link. I don't think it makes too much sense to try to main Lucina and Krom because they're just both sword fighters and I don't know, having two sword fighters feels kind of dumb. But I might just have second pick Lucina against characters who are really good at recovery. Like people like Pid and Kirby, stuff like that, I might go in with Lucina. Like if I lose to a Pid or a Kirby, I might just pick Luc counter pick Lucina just to like be able to edge guard better. But other than that, Krom hands down all the time, every time. Um, maybe Link? If, if, I, if I like Link better than I like Dark Samus, I'm obviously going to go with Link, because I, I have more knowledge with Link. But I just have to rediscover his tech. Um, I love laughing out this Link. This Link just... I, I, I gotta stop talking about him. <laughs> yeah, man. It just... Man, this game is great. I love this game so much. And I can't wait to, like, just go balls deep into this game, man. Like, right now, I feel like we're barely scratching the surface. I mean, obviously, the game's only been out for, like, what, 20 days? So, yeah, like, we're not really at that level of craziness yet, but I feel like once we get there, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts. This game's meta is going to evolve in such a crazy way that like people are not even going to see it coming. There's characters that feel like they can do so much that hasn't been discovered yet, like, like Link, for example. Link feels like there's so much more potential to him. Um, Robin feels like he has so much potential. Um, Daisy is just ridiculous. The potential that she has is nuts. But characters kind of like... Um, like Marth and Lucina, I feel like they might have peaked early. Like, some characters feel like they would peak early. Like, the, the Belmonts feel like they will peak early. Because, like, there, there's so much they can do, you know? There's not characters like Ike and Ganon who feel really strong right now. It's because they're very straightforward and they're easy to pick up. But um, they're, they can't, they're not going to get much more advanced than they already are. Meanwhile, you have characters like like um, like Link, like Mewtwo. Characters like uh, I feel like Mewtwo is going to be really strong throughout the meta. Uh, characters like Shulk and Cinderor, 
they're just like um Olimar definitely but I don't know I feel like Olimar might peak early too like some of these characters are really strong because they peaked already while other characters you might have not just we, we haven't discovered all there is to discover obviously nobody's had peak performance level yet because the game is too new for that but I feel like you know the, the learning curve for some of these characters are much stiffer for other characters and once the other characters start peaking we're gonna see this the, the meta just change like insanely obviously like I mean that, that happens with every fighting game um big um big salute to fighters dragon ball fighters toy decided to just murder it and i'm really sad for that because that was the game that i was going to go comp full competitive with and then ultimate got announced so i just went with ultimate instead but fighters felt like one of the greatest fighting games i've ever played and i feel bad that it's its life is pretty much done unless they take back what they said which is to they want people to pay them so that they can host fighters in their tournaments and stupid you should be paying them for that it's, i'm not even going to get into that the reason why i even bring that up is because fighters had a very good update lifespan in terms of balance um characters like 16 and cell were rampant they were too powerful they were too strong too good and they got nerfed but they didn't get ruined and now we're in a, in a point in the meta we got to the point in the meta where all the characters felt really good and nobody felt broken you know what i mean and I feel like that's how you should handle balancing a game. If you have characters that are too strong, bring them down, but don't, don't shoot them in the knee like you did to Cloud. Um, just bring them down, but don't, don't just kill them. Um, and bring characters that are weak up instead of just leaving them alone. You know what I mean? I feel like that's the best way. The best way I could put that for fighters, at least, is for example, if you took a look at uh, Super Saiyan Goku. He's one of like the most basic characters in the game, and when he started out, people would put him really low on the tier list because he felt really whatever. He was very average, and then once people once people started averaging out, you started seeing this character like, shine a lot more to the point where now um, a lot of people pick Super Saiyan Goku as like one of their characters in like top tier tournaments and stuff like that because he's just really good. He has really strong fundamentals, and it's, it makes him a really good character. Um, so yeah, somebody who's like straight up mid tier became one of the better characters in the game because of the fact that everybody got balanced everybody was good and they didn't do a lot to change super saiyan goku he just it just worked out that way and i don't know now i'm ranting about balancing and i'm pretty sure i should just end the video because it's probably going to be way too freaking long but thank you so much for joining me on my rant about how i felt about these characters personally this is my personal opinion. Don't take this as a tier list. Don't look at this and be like, new tier list, uh, new data found by this player. This is a tier list, 100% guaranteed it's not. It's not a tier list, it's just my my personal tier list. This is Matt's tier list for Matt only, not for the rest of the world. But it gave me a good idea of how the characters play. Um, the whole point of this was to figure out what the characters do, how they do it, why they do it. And in turn, being able to play the character you start figuring out how to counter the character too. So now I understand how all these characters work, I understand what their plan is, I understand how they play, and I can fight them now. And that's great. And like I said, by doing this, it took me 500 and something battles, which obviously you're going to come out a lot better than what you came in. So right now I can pick up Chrom and I can body level my CPUs left and right. Like it's, it's not even hard anymore. Like when I was doing this, it was a challenge because level 9 CPUs are insane in this game, but now I'm even way way better than they are like leagues above them like i get three stock at level nine cpus for free now with prom um i could kind of do that with lucina and link for that as well anyway ranting of course this whole thing was a rant i don't even know how i'm not i haven't lost my voice yet i don't even know how but yeah i've been going on for like two hours jesus christ anyway thank you so much for joining me i will highly request that you guys try this for yourselves just you don't have to do 10 if, if I had to do this all over again, I would say five. Uh, make it to five um, and only allow yourself two loses. Two losses and five wins. Just make, make the tier list based on five and you should be pretty decent. Just don't make it as big as my tier list that goes from S plus to F. Make it maybe from S to C or D or something like that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, if you stuck around this long, you're a champ. Thank you so much, and I don't know, 
I don't know what else to say. I can't wait for this game to evolve in the meta. I can't wait for things to get crazy with this game. Um, I just feel like there's so much more to discover, and I feel like the game is just... It's just the surface, man. This is just the surface. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for listening, and see you guys in the next one, whatever that may be. Um, this is a Let's Play channel, in case you guys haven't heard. A 2018 Let's Play channel. What could go wrong? That's our that's our catchphrase, our sub catchphrase. I was trying to copyright that, but then I realized it's almost 2019, so we're gonna update it to 2019. I wasn't gonna copyright anything. I was just that was a joke. That was a joke. I was joking. Anyway, yeah, I've been saying bye for like a good seven minutes. Wait, I don't know. Do I want to end it? I feel like I might have something else to say, something else to add on. Nah, I don't think so. Oh okay, no, let's talk about DLC. Uh, Piranha Plant is coming up, and Piranha Plant might be fun to play with, too. Apparently, Piranha Plant has been discovered to be the slowest character in the game. Even slower than Incineroar. Just based on the trailer. I'm not going to listen to that, because when I listened to that, I thought Chrom was going to suck, and then here I am with Chrom, just kicking ass. Um, I'm going to try Piranha Plant when it comes out. Then we have Joker. Um, what do you think potentially is going to be the next four other DLCs? I feel like... Oof. <laughs> I almost dropped my whole laptop. I feel like Sora has a pretty strong chance at being DLC, um, just because Kingdom Hearts 3 and everything. Like, if he doesn't get in now, he's never getting in. Um, but I feel like Sora, if, if you remove the whole Donald and Goofy thing from it, I, even in terms of copyright, I feel like Sora would be really has a really good chance to get in. Um, Dante, I feel like, has a good chance to get in too, weirdly enough, because of Don't May Cry 5. I don't know if they're going to use Don't May Cry 5 Dante or Don't May Cry 3 Dante, which is the most popular one, obviously. But I feel like Dante has a pretty, pretty, pretty good chance to get in. Maybe they'll use both and just alternate costumes. I don't know. Or maybe they'll give him a moveset from Don't Make Cry 5. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to see Dante swinging around a motorcycle. Um, but yeah, I feel like Dante and um, and Sora have a really strong chance of getting in. Um, characters that I want to see in are like like Banjo Kazooie. I feel like he wouldn't get in unless they were remaking Banjo Kazooie in HD, like doing the whole. One and two, you don't have to do the other one, the stupid one, nuts and bolts. You don't have to do that. You can just do Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tui and just HD it and call it a day. And I feel like if they did that, then he would have a really good chance of getting in. Otherwise, he doesn't. Um, the character that I really want in is 2B and A2 from Near Automata. I would say 2B and just have A2 as an alternate costume, but I would want her to be their Echo because A2 has this really cool mechanic where she goes pretty much berserk mode and just destroys everything, and I love A2. A2 is my favorite. I would want A2 over 2B, believe it or not. But 2B is more iconic, so I would say probably 2B would get in, but I would want A2 a lot more. But that's just me wishful thinking, you know? And then another character that I really want to get in would be Goku. And that would just, because it would blow up the internet. You know, the internet would just be destroyed if Goku made it into Smash, because this whole time we have this mentality of he's not a video game character, therefore he's not in. But Ridley's here, and we thought he was never going to be in here, and he's here. And Cloud is here, and he was always a meme, and now he's here. I don't know, there's, there's so much potential, you know? That that if Goku got in, it doesn't even have to open a float, floodgate of anime characters, it doesn't have to do that, it could just be Goku, and that's it. But I feel like just having Goku in this game just... It would be fantastic, man. Especially now that Fighters is... Man, I'm so upset about that. But yeah, since Fighters is not around anymore, just having Goku and Smash would be the next greatest thing. And I don't know, I would just... I would cry, honestly. If Goku made it, I would cry. I swear to God, I would. But anyway, yeah, characters that I would want to get in the game are 2B. Uh, but 2B has been in, like, everything. Cameoing and everything, so I don't know if it would happen. Uh, Dante and Sora, I feel like, are pretty much... They, they have a really, really good chance to get in. I don't know. I really don't know who else would get in. But, I don't know. Maybe somebody from, like, um, Dragon Quest would be a good idea to put in. I wanted Isaac from Golden Sun, but that didn't happen. I mean, it can't happen anymore, but maybe we could have Dark Dawn Isaac. Or maybe even Matthew from Golden Sun, but I don't see that happening unless they do something relevant with Golden Sun. We already know it probably isn't going to happen, so... I don't know. Now we're just ranting about a completely different topic altogether, so maybe I should just end the video. 
I don't know. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy life. Enjoy your day. Enjoy everything. And no, yeah. Take care.